Yay. Set up the old X tweet out. Uh, let's uh, tell that to stop doing that. There we go. All right. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Forgot a little bit of old action. Let's go back to. Tweet it out. There we go. It's been tweeted. It's in the Twitters. The Twitterverse. Go here. And click that, that, and that. And there we go. Oh, come down here. Click there. There we go. Let's see what we got going. Yep, and tweet it out. We did that. Go here, click here. All right, and pre roll ads are disabled for 31 minutes. So for 31, you know, minute, 31 minute. Okay. Well, there's the, uh, there's the uh, candidate behind us. So. It uh, needs some help. That, that stock extruder is just not uh, not cutting it. So we're gonna replace it with the uh, SliceWorks variant. They have a direct drive extruder similar to uh, kind of like a, I guess like the now defunct Focus. And it seems to be pretty 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 good. We're gonna get this thing installed. Check it out. It's got all the goodies. Got bands already on it, mounted up, ready to go. Has that runout sensor in the top there that will wire in. I'm running Clipper, so installing that should be pretty good. It's got the duct, got that longer nozzle. Um, on the side here, you got a little hole that kind of passes through. Um, I will probably just for right now run the wires alongside or we may make a small modification to this end here open this up so we can fish the wires through for the bl touch maybe pull this cover off and then fish those wires out through here and loop it into the the mount there so and and this is purple even though it for whatever reason looks more blue but this is a pretty nice looking purple color so it's all 3d printed housing 3d printed duct um, and it comes with a different this little back plate here um, the only thing I'm, I'm wondering is if these are going to be spaced out far enough apart the uh, the slots on the back for the belt but I've got some extra belt so if we need it I got it and we'll see what happens so 
Uh, we have all of our many connectors. They're all pretty well labeled. You've got F1. Then you've got E minus. Um, this one's obviously your extruder stepper motor. Um, this one has nothing on it. I do apologize. It's I've, I've had this for a while, and I wanted to get it installed. This Ender's having problems, so EC. And then, of course, heater cartridge. So, I'm going to do a couple of things on this. I guess one thing I can show you is, I don't know how well you can see that, but the print quality is just not the greatest. It's it's pretty much garbage. So everything is just like crunchy, you know? It's not wasn't extruding good, wasn't, you know, printing properly. This is running clipper on this one. So we'll get it swapped over and do some config stuff. Get it get it potentially printing tonight. We'll see how long this is going to take. Hopefully not too crazy long. I, uh, you know, got to work in the morning, so hopefully we're not out here all night long, and we'll see how many interruptions we get, too, because it never fails. I stream, and family all, like, he's streaming, everybody, invade! So, but, let's go ahead and put my hand all up in the camera, right? Move this part back real quick. Get this out the way. We've got a couple things to do. i got some cables I need to remove off of here anyway. So but let's get this power cord back out of the way. Push this back in. We're going to disconnect this USB so I don't accidentally do something with it. We've got the... I had a touch screen on here. Big Tree Tech. Um, I took that off and went back to the stock one for right now. I've got all kinds of craziness going on here, so... Yeah, but let's uh, push this back real quick. We got to loosen this screw here. You guys can't really see there, but we got to take this screw loose right here. This thing is definitely a dusty, dirty machine. It's been sitting forever, but this screw here has to come out. So we'll start there. Get this one out. There we go. Take it out, set it off to the side so we don't lose it. And then, kind of set this thing up. I've got the boxes on here. Let's take these off real quick. There we go. That way we don't lose stuff everywhere. A little easier, I think, too, if we set this guy on its side this way. Pull these two cables back out and then that'll fall back into place too. We've got gotta open this guy up real quick so take loose these three screws and again set them all together so we don't use them. This does have a Big Tree Tech um, Mini E3 V2 or V1.2, I believe it is. Uh, yep, V1.2. Okay. Pull this one out because we don't need this one anymore. So throw that back there out the way. And then we have our regular cable here that we could try to kindly rest back behind there. I think for right now I'll just leave it hang. This is a RGB fan. My I had given this printer to my son originally and then he decided he didn't want it anymore and it was just sitting so I said oh, I'll take it back and put it to work. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna swap out parts and put it back to work. Um, like I said, it is currently running Clipper, so I gotta put a heat sink on that. But let's grab our our wires that run up to the hot end here and get all these 
currently undone, so we'll unplug this fan wire first. What's going on, Rob? Man, good to see you, bud. Hopefully you're doing well. I'm just uh, doing some craziness here. It probably wouldn't hurt to... Who knows? I don't know a good way to, to mount this thing, so I guess we'll just put it like right there and hope it's not super crazy. Yeah, maybe right there. That's not too bad. There we go. Let me grab my tool kit. Pull the old iFixit kit over. And I'm gonna I'm just gonna take all the wires from the hot end uh loose right now. That way I can pull them all back and then you know kind of go from there. I did pull the BL touch wires up through here and we will get the BL touch. I'll have to figure I said we'll figure something out. I'll probably just run the wires along with it for now and later on come back and dress everything up. Make it look a little nice. Currently I'm trying to find my uh, I have a pair of cutters around here somewhere. I'm trying to remember where the heck I put them. There we go. They are the good old reality type. Uh, Rob, probably, just saying, you're probably the only one here. I just went live a few minutes ago, and I'm already just, like, digging in. I'm not, uh, I want to get this hot end on tonight before it gets, like, super crazy. Um... So we're going to pull everything back and start disconnecting everything. Our far end thermistor wire right here. So we'll take that one off. And let's see if we can guess based on everything which one is our thermistor. EC. Hmm. That's a fan. And that's a fan. That's a run out sensor and a motor. So this EC. There we go. All right. I'm going to plug them in as I take them out, so that way I don't have to try and figure them out as I go. You know what I mean? White, bottom, right. <laughs> well, yeah. White, bottom, right. Yep. All right. Well, that guy is out of the way now. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's get the uh, wires for the thermistor. Or for the hot end heater cartridge. There we go. Oh. And these two, since it is a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 V2 1.2. There we go. Pull those out now. And then grab our two wires here. And polarity on this is not necessarily a thing. But since the wires are color-coded, I am going to try to be smart about this and do red to, red to positive and black to negative. Let's see here. I'm hoping the way I'm doing this is keeping most of me out of the way. There we go. Got that one in. Loosen that up a little bit more. Like I said, I'm going to work on cameras and lighting as things go uh, forward and hopefully be able to get better angles on stuff. You know, better lighting, better angles. That's what all the cool kids are doing, right? Big, fancy, expensive, cool kid cameras. Got to get me one of them. Come on, ya. Yeah, little jerk. Yeah, two flies that won't leave me alone right now, too. And that does not help in a semi-stressful environment, you know? Come on. And yes, I do have the power already full. Is shut off. This is running Clipper. Again, uh, this will be a Clipper install when we get into the firmware. I can see where it's supposed to go. Let me see something here real quick. Yeah, there's a weird little burr on the end of this. I'm going to cut this tip off. 
There. That isn't going to hurt nothing. And look at that. Now it doesn't fight me and it goes right up in there. There's a weird little end on that crimp for that ferrule. So it's good to see that it's feral. But, you know. Let me see. There we go. All right. That one's in. That one's in. Let's make sure they're both tight. There we go. Okay. So that one's in now. Now all we got to do is look at our fans here. And let's see what we got again for fans. We got F1. And if I remember right, come in here. It's hard to see, but F1. Okay, so F2 is the heater cartridge. F1 is part cooling. So the part cooling fan, and you think I'd remember this by now, because the way it's pretty out does stuff i don't so let's see here uh part cooling fan is the blue and white or blue and yellow sorry blue and yellow so part cooling fan is again i just said it and i didn't pay attention like an idiot okay so Let's see here. So F1. Yeah. F1 is part cooling. So let's find our F F1. One wire there. You can't really tell because that camera is a bit of a hot mess. But F1, part cooling. So take our blue and yellow out there we go and put our f1 in there there we go oh you know what let's uh kind of follow everything else here and go under that bed thermistor but there we go there's that wire out the way now so let's see here oh yeah that's right Forgot this one, the uh, fan, uh, the fan wires are over here. And do I have another set of pins for another fan? I do. We can fix that in the firmware. So let's do that. We'll, we'll update the fan pin. So let's just grab this guy real quick here. Let's untangle it, of course. And there we go. Now the fan one. So fan one will be the hot end. So I have to remember to go in and change the pins for fan one to our hot end fan. There we go. Okay. And then the other thing we got to look for is um, is our filament run out. Which, if I remember right, filament run out, we should be able to plug into the PTDET. No, that's a three pin, but we can we can make it work. Uh, oh, wait, there we are. I think that's one of them right there. Let's see. Uh, probe and zero end stop. Yep, E zero end stop. That's the one we want. Okay, give me a second here and I will trying to bring the camera up a little bit so but here is your e0 end stop right there and then again we put the hot end thermistor right here and then of course we got uh, one fan here one fan here kind of hard to see sorry there you go one fan is right here Let's move these out the way for the probe, but there's one there and one there. Those are your part cooler and whatnot. So there's those. And then the only thing that's left to do now is hook up the extruder. Let me see here. Can I get this to... There we go. I can get it to kind of come up a little higher. 
open everything up. There we go. And all we got left is the extruder motor wire, which runs in with this group here. And let's take a look. EM. Yep. Extruder. So we'll pull this wire out. Knock you guys down. Hopefully you're enjoying the view on the floor there. Sorry, give me a second. Hopefully it's not too crazy down there hanging around. Whoop. There we go. Sorry, but there we go. Extruder, extruder motor wire is now plugged in. Ah, oh, Otter. What's going on, good sir? Hopefully you're doing well, Shane. Hopefully you are doing well. I've got a nice little cluster going on here. Now I have to unplug this set of wires here because we're going to change the pinout for that. And we're going to run off the board for the odd end fan instead of using this guy here this always on for part cool or for the uh, hot end we are going to use oh look at that i never feraled this one <laughs> and then we're going to take the field touch probe out there we go that way we can pull those wires back out of there ah motion yeah not the right kind of motion though right yeah so again for anybody who doesn't know this is the slice works direct drive uh nope no solder on those either they were it was me being a hack you know a hack job back in the day but this is slice works uh direct drive kit if you look at it it looks very familiar for those who owned a certain board or a certain printer uh yes it it is very similar to that of like the focus um so we're gonna we're gonna give this bad boy a whirl and see how things turn out uh for right now though we need to take that big cluster of wires came out. I'm not going to put the uh, cover back on this yet because I need to get this big cluster of wires now up through here, around and to the top. So let me get all this for the moment. Just kind of set in here. And then we can kind of hide this guy back out of the way as well. But there's everything kind of tucked in. Let's do something here. Let's see. Those two wires to lay down a little bit. That lay down in there. See, then when we put the cover back on, they'll all lay down nice and neat. And this will zip tie up when we're done and send off to this side here. So, but for right now, we just need to flip it up so we can tear the hot end apart. So... There we go. Did I accidentally? There we go. But there we go. So now we can start tearing that off of there. Everything is feraled in the kit that needs to be feraled, and everything else had plugs on it that needed to have plugs, so that was a bonus. But now we're going to take all of this loose. Uh, first, let's cut all these zip ties away. All right, that, 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 pull all that away, take the uh, extruder motor and everything off too while we're at it, stupid flies, there we go, okay, so pull all this up, because there's two wires I want to pull back through. And realistically, if I pull all this off, I'm not going to be heartbroken. I'm not going to lie. Because it's not that hard to put back on if you need to. So, let's, uh, let's get all this off of here. Just pulling it away. There we go. This stuff has seen a better day anyway. But there we go. So now I can pull out the two wires that will ride back down alongside of or with for the BL touch Put those back then all of this can now come off be disconnected whatever there we go we'll just unplug these two wires for now pull them out of the way there we go throw that up there and let's get back to tools take this hot end carriage apart 
Now, I've been trying to print this thing, or get this thing to print some PLA, and it's just not been cooperating. It's just been printing, like under extruding, it's printing nasty-like. Not happy with it. So, I, uh, yeah, there we go. I was looking for the, the bit I needed. I know I'm going to be kind of boring, guys. I do apologize, as usual, but just know that I love you all. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to have to print a different mount, too, so it means we'll have to probably fire up another... Let's see. Alan's floating in here for that. Let's see if I got one that'll reach back in there. There we go. Yep. Look at that. But I will have to... We'll have to print a, a new mount for this BL Touch for it. So I don't know that we'll necessarily be printing tonight. I could go look for it real quick, but I just want to focus on getting it installed. Get it focused. But there we go. Knock that out of there is fine. There we go. Huh. It's a little loose. Way to go, sunny boy. Let's take this off the bracket real quick. It's going to be interesting switching to a direct drive on this. I'm hoping, hoping huh, that is a loose carriage. You are correct. Yes, it is definitely a loose carriage. We need to take the uh, uh, extruder off. I don't know. Can you guys see? You see? Can you see me here? There we go. Disconnect that, swap out for possibly the right size Allen. No, I don't think this is it. Yes, I'm wrong. See, it's been a while since I've done this. So, which is cool because with the Ender 3 V2 that I have, it has that garbage plastic um, extruder on it. So it'll be nice to have, you know, a metal one to throw on there since the extruder is the same across the board with those enders, except for when you switch to a direct drive, which I'm not exactly certain which way I'm going to go with the V2. I just know that this Pro is in dire need of some upgrades. So that's what I'm doing. The Ender 3 with a... Uh, stripped gear, kind of unhappy how hard it is to get, oh, to be, basic shooter gear, yeah, I know what you're saying, good sir, I know what you're saying, okay, something vibrated, it was my phone, I'm going to set these at shooter those those parts anyway up out the way let's get this last one loose so this motor can fall out of the way get all these parts out of here and this isn't even a creality motor this is a replacement i put on because the extruder died just some generic motor i had just kind of laying around so take that out the mix though we don't need that no more there we go. Find that other screw that just took off on me here. I am, like I said, I'm kind of hoping that this kit works out really well for me. I don't know. This is my first time installing it. I did attempt to install it once before, but ADHD brain gave up on me real fast. And then it's just been kind of sitting. And I'm like, no, this thing needs an upgrade. We're going to do it. And again, thank you, Sliceworks, for sending this out. A long time ago and then putting up with me and ADHD brain Dan taking forever to make something happen so I do I do again greatly appreciate Slice Works uh, 
so for putting up with me. Let's see here. There we go. I am going to do this the kind of fun and annoying way. 79ers. Yeah, buddy. We 79ers got to stick together, man. We are the last of the 70s. We are the last of a great generation. Unless you ask somebody else. Let's loosen these two up real quick so we can get these, this belt loose. There we go. Okay, take this belt loose and we'll see if this belt is going to be long enough. I have more belt if I need it. So, let's see. Yeah, that popped over pretty, pretty stinking easy. Not super pumped about that. But, guys, like I said, I'm sorry the angles are kind of garbage and whatnot. I'm hoping to have a camera on an arm that I can kind of wiggle and move around at some point. But... For right now, I don't. Uh, dang nabbit. I was kind of hoping that these screws were going into a threaded plate, but there is a nut on there, so I do have to uh, choose one of two ways to put this thing together. Uh, again, I guess I, I just went through all that headache. I can just lift it up, take the end off, slide it on, put the end back on, or take the cover off, and then actually... No, because I should, should be able to get to this bottom one. Let's see here. Yeah. We'll just take this bottom one loose here, or the bottom being the top at the moment. But we'll set this guy on here. Grab there, grab here. I just hope I don't lose the nut. So I'm going to lay it flat so the nut don't get away from me. Or try to. Eh. Let's pull this up out the way. Do as I say, don't do as I do. So don't do that. Okay. Grab that there. There we go. There we go. Okay. There. Nut out. Let's see. Hmm. That is, or was, in there pretty stinking tight. But we got it. We got it. Okay. So set this over grab our pieces of belt and let's just see before we go doing anything else let's see if we can get this belt to work here because I think my the last time I did something with this I think that was part of the issue was that I was having issues with the belt and of course it does have to go down under. There's hardly any room to try and finesse that belt. So I do apologize, guys. I will see what I can do here. Let's see. Um, yeah, it is. Let me see here. Yeah, it's over the motor. And that is just this, this belt is just too much it's just too short and i mean just as in like not even two millimeters three millimeters too short and with these brass fittings on here it's gonna be a pain so we're gonna do i've got some more belt we're just gonna swap it out and keep moving i'm just gonna replace it real quick with some more belt we'll just belt it and zip tie it and call it good so stock belt go bye bye replacement it is nothing special this is some generic belt i've had around for better part of forever just a plain black belt i don't even there's nothing on the package i don't think let's see uh 
Non-shielded inductive. Yeah, it's just thrown in a bag. This isn't even the right stuff because it says 5 to 36 volts. So it was just a random bag it was thrown in. So, that being said, let's just fish some belt through. Let's see. We'll pull a big chunk of it out of there and we can rewrap it later. But that'll give us a little bit more kind of, you know, room to play with here. Around and under. And then, just for the sake, I am going to overlap a bit because, again, you can always cut off, but you can't put back. So, we'll cut it right here. There we go. Now let's push this down under. Thankfully in 3D printing I've gathered a nice collection of extra stuff over the years. So it's made things like this a whole lot easier. You know, when you gotta make changes on the fly. But there we go. And there we go. Plenty of slack. Plenty of slack. What's going on, Bionic? How's non-fam Bionic? Bionic fam? How you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Got to take a hydration break, guys. Bear with me. But again, for those who are just popping in, this is the Sliceworks Direct Drive Kit. Very similar to uh, the Focus Odin style. Um, this is a... Uh, pretty much a direct drop-in. Uh, I did have to, uh, again, like you, know, you guys just saw, I did have to work on some swapping out the belt there a little bit. And for the sake of not wanting it to go anywhere, I have two options. Option A, option B. Both options are a pain in my A. Because it's such a tight fit let's do this real quick let's just loop this together we'll stick a zip tie in there and then we'll put this one on but I gotta make sure it's gonna be enough and that yeah that'll work gotta go a little bit longer I am looping this down under and then back up so the teeth do catch I have seen people loop it this way and then, you know, on Ender's loop them this way and put a zip tie on it. I personally don't trust that. And I don't think that the difference, you know, I don't think the difference going this way, that little bit of down is, is enough to cause any issues going across side to side. So let me grab my zip ties here. I have some smaller, clear ones, white ones, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so... We're going to throw those on here. We're going to make a loop real quick. One thing, guys, when you got to do this, just pre-make your, your starting loop. Pre-make this. Uh, don't try to make it on the belt. And then when you get your belt kind of looped up, it'll fit over. Then just, you know... Get it about where you think you're going to need it, put it over, and then you can shift everything into place and then give it that final tug. I am going to flip it over so it goes out the back so that I know that it's going to clear the rail uh, back here. I will show you guys what this looks like when I'm done. I do apologize, but live streams, it's kind of hard to, to get everything perfect and, you know, shots and things, so... Okay, let's see, yes, there's that, I'm going to stick one more zip tie back there, I am not afraid to double up when I can, because two is sometimes better than none, so, same thing, get it through, go over, get it closer, Hmm. Oops, go the right way. There we go. Back. 
There we go. That's better for me. It makes me feel better. I am less worried. Quick little pull and a snip. Pull and a snip. There we go. All right, get those out the way. Pull this back around. And then, same thing on the other side. And this we want to pull kind of taunt, but not too taunt, because we can still adjust here. Let's see. That is over there. we got to get all the slack out first. There we go. It is dragging a little bit against the, the pulley here. Maybe I'll see if I can work something out for that later. But we'll see once we get it. We'll get it together. See how it does. Zach! He is still alive. Yeah, I've been watching you on several streams lately, good sir. It's good to see you. I'm glad to see you're doing okay. I guess. Let's see. Dare I even... That, that does seem... This thing would stop falling, the dropping. And I know you guys can't see nothing on the back side there. I know, I'm sorry. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. There we go. There, let's get some zippy zips. Zippy zap. You guys know that guy? The guy who always talks about zippy zap. He's talking about his hot sauce. Get you some of that zippy zap. I want some of that zippy zap. At the same time, I want a bunch of things. So, it's nothing new. I want, I want. It's all I ever do is want. You know? Peace, love, and chicken grease, and all that fun stuff. Let's see. Let's go back just one or two teeth. There we go. Pulling it back like two teeth so it's a little bit looser there. And let's see. Put this over the top. Loop this around. Like I said, I'll spin around and show it to you guys. It's not beautiful. It's not pretty. And it's because I'm using a extra belt or aftermarket belt or whatever you want to say. Let me see here. I want to make sure that there's enough belt there that I can push this out. It'll still stay in there. Okay. Let's pull back one more tooth. Okay. There. And pull that up as close as I can get. Crank it down. Just installing a direct drive. It's the Focus Odin, similar to the Focus Odin 5 style hot end. Uh, sent to me by Sliceworks. It's a direct drop in that they have for it. So, for the Ender products. I'm going to have to put that nut and screw back in, but let's uh, make sure these are tight and clip it, clip it, and let's pull the rest of that belt back here and give it a quick snip. There we go. Okay, got all that. Now we've got to put the eccentric nut back in. Get all those pieces up here so we'll have everything where we need it. Spin this thing around so you guys can see it. There is there is the not so beautiful, but yet it works. I will tighten the belt and then that'll pull this little bit of slop out of here. But like I said, the stock belt was just about two to three mils, just too short. It wouldn't work. I could have probably tried to chop some of that brass off of there. I just didn't feel like it. So we just ran some new belt. 
It's made of fireproof material, LOL. Who is focus? Yeah, exactly. Nobody knows. It's this mythical being. So we'll shove this back in here and we'll shove it in close. There we go. Now, the eccentric, it's right there. And then the wheel goes there. That's off the old one that I took off. I got to remember not to use that part and that part. And then, let's see here, where's the black one? The black one was the one that came off of this. So, put this wheel, he wheeled back in here. Let's see. Yeah, we gotta go lower. So it moves the wheel away more, not up closer. Gotta quit being stupid and remember, down is up and up is down. <laughs> okay. There we go. Put the screw through there. Nope, oh, we got the wrong screw. Should be a black one. Where did I put that black screw? Oh, <laughs> it's in the uh, the, the proper V wheel. <laughs> Whoops, my bad guys. I had everything already just popped out and ready to go, and grabbed the wrong wrong one there. There we go. Now I just got to get that tightened down. 3D, what's up? Love. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't see the end stop trigger plate mounted. Um, should be in the box. Goes over the fan where the steel grill is. Oh, 3D, yeah. Um, give me a minute. I'll take a look because I think if I remember right, let me get this mounted up real quick. Like I said, I'm doing the uh, doing the kind of down and dirty way. Give me just a second here, real quick though. Let me get this uh start it again gotta let's bring this all the way up so i can get under there more apple logo not an ig tree tech <laughs> yeah the uh, apple logo is uh probably if i remember right my son's i don't think i put that on there uh like I said, this is one of my OG Enders that my sons, uh, uh, one of my sons adopted for a while there. There we go. All right. Let's see. That's better, but that's not better. You know, I gotta, gotta finish tightening everything. Let's see here. Okay, there's that. I want to go crazy tight because we do need to twist that eccentric nut. So, let's give the eccentric a twist. Not that tight. Yeah, a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay. There we go. I'll have to look and see if I can find the piece you speak of. 3D. If not, I will have to print it. Yeah, it's not the big tree tech. Yeah, no, it's not a big tree tech. <laughs> okay, uh, let me tighten the uh, tension here. Tighten these guys down real quick. Okay, let's see. That's good. That's good. Oh yeah, you're right. There's a uh Wow. I've got a Let me spin this thing around real quick here.
Yeah, there's a uh, piece, I believe, that goes here, if I remember, and I don't know if I can find that, but uh, let's see here. Okay, so. Yes, it's good to see you, Sliceworks. How are you, 3D? I figured out who you were as soon as you said there was that part. It was good to see you. I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry that this isn't magnificent setup. I'm working on trying to make things better. I took too long of a pause. Things fell apart. I'm trying to put them back together. But not an excuse. We're going to make this happen. Uh, it's 15-minute print. Send me the file. Good, sir. Send it. Send, or send it. Send it. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, send it anywhere. It don't matter. I, I think you got my email. If you don't have my email, I can get you my email. It's not a big deal. You send it. I'll print it. We'll make it happen. I've got several other printers here. I've got the bear up there. I'm going to just throw it at the bear. Bear's a good printer. I like it. It's one of my trusty, most more reliable ones. Will do. Uh, I've got several emails, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, bear is an interesting name. It's B.A. Bearacus is the name I actually gave it because it's a uh, Prusa bear. Uh, it's a, well, it's a self-sourced parts uh, bear that, um, give me just a second here, um, yes, man, here we go. I think this is the one I got my account on your site set up with for email, so, there you go, should be, should be that one. Flying Bear makes some good printers. They, I, I... Thought it was one of theirs. Oh yeah, no, it's not one of theirs. It's a it's a source parts Prusa Bear kit. It's the one that's right, right there. It's right here. Or if I go into this camera here, it is that black and uh, white one right there. That was a uh, kind of a big community collab I did with uh, LDO, uh, the now defunct uh, Sacred Etching. I wish Taylor would come back. He did amazing work on frames and laser etching. Um, but then it was, uh, LDO printed solid, Taylor at sacred etching, um, Max at Omnia drop and, uh, big tree tech, uh, a, a Ron, uh, Aaron geared. He helped with that. Uh, another guy named Ryan Thorpe he goes by Thorpedo. Um, there was quite a few people that all got involved in that project and i brought it to murph 22 i think it was murph 21 22 i brought it and it was great i had a, a great time everybody who saw it was in love with it and it's been one of my most loyal 3d printers um but i'm hoping to change that so we'll see how this old g ender 3 pro comes back to life because right now as it stands i've got you guys' is direct drive. We're going to get set up. Again, this is running Clipper, so we will get a we'll get it set up to work with the Clipper config. Um, and cross our fingers. But uh, just checking checking my emails here to see if that pops through. I did message you on on uh, Twitter. So just gonna wait patiently for the file to come while i'm doing that let's uh kind of tidy some stuff up let me put this back on my leg or my my hip here hey a random screw interesting let me grab that guy. oh i shot it back my bad let's grab this cap here i think i dropped that from, maybe from there maybe not but Let's move some of these random parts and stuff out of the way. We do have to put the BL Touch back on, so I will have to print a uh, BL Touch mount for it. Uh, Sliceworks, if you have a BL Touch mount that will work with that uh, as well, let me know so I can mount it up. I am going to just run the wires along with it for right now. Like I said, later on I'll, I'll probably cut the heat shrink and uh, refit it and run it up all nice and neat inside there. Less weight going faster now. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a decent direct drive. It's not crazy. So, and, I mean, 
fingers crossed, like I said. I mean, the one thing I do give Focus credit for when they had their similar styled hot end was it did at least print really well from the hot end side. The machines themselves were a little lackluster. They did leave a, a bit to be desired, and it does not help that uh, as time went on, they uh, they started to forget about us in the community. Not so much like you know the the giveaways, handouts, and stuff, but they they weren't listening. They they only cared about the bottom line, which was how cheap can we like how cheap can we produce these and how much can we charge for them, and then they kind of forget that the machines uh, started to get a little. QC went away. They were getting too big too fast, and it kind of hurt them. So my hope, my hope is that uh, if they decide to come back, they slow down, put a machine out there, rebrand. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes if you if you dig too big a hole, you got to rebrand. You know. Um, not saying deceive. That I'm not saying. Don't say that you're somebody else altogether. Like. You're gonna if you're gonna rebrand, rebrand and say, you know, with new th with with new things in life come a rebrand, and that's where we're at. We heard what you had to say, and we are going to make the proper changes. You know, um, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm moving this all the way to the far end under new management. Yeah, there you go, Cell Monkey. Let me lift this up to show you guys. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm making sure there's enough slack that when I go all the way to the far end of the extrusion here, I will have enough cable. And now I'm just zip tying it to the back where the uh, extruder was. I'm going to put two zip ties, one through each one of the outside screw holes so that it's secured. And uh, the way I do it, I'll show you here in a minute, it's nothing great, it's nothing amazing, but for me, I like it because, well, it's just a wonderful, it just looks a little cleaner in my opinion, and my ADHD always gets the best of me, so, even though the overall is wires, wires everywhere, wires, clean up the wires, <laughs> I should have waited and put the BL touch wires in there, but I'll cut this all loose and, and do that again later. Uh, talking about focus coming back. Uh, Papa Bear. Uh, no, we're not talking about them coming back. I'm pretty sure what happened happened. What I'm saying is one of the, the, the parts of the focus that was good was this piece right here. And this is the Sliceworks direct drive, which is similar to that in, in several ways, but it's it's really... It's, it's, it's the part of the printer that I actually enjoyed. Some people didn't care for it, but I did. So I'm excited to get this on this ender and check it out. Um, crud sickles. Um, do, 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 do. No, trash. Did it go to trash by chance? No. All right. Uh, maybe it just hasn't. Maybe. Hey, Digital Dragon. Good to see you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Hope you are doing well. Heard the focus hot end was super prone to jamming and failing a lot. I never had that problem, my man. I never had that problem. So thankfully for me with mine, I never had that issue. <laughs> uh, give me just a second here, guys. I'm all right. Vanguard PL touch mode, Vanguard PL touch holder. Let's see, download, download file. Come on. There we go. Let's just throw it on the desktop so it's easy to find. And save it. Oh, a stretch. Give me just a second. I got to grab two files to download. I'll give you a stretch. Oh, looks like uh, same file twice. Hey, yeah, well. Oh, no. Hmm. Yeah, two different files. So, download. And save it to the desktop. There we go. Uh, open up Slicer real quick here, guys. And throw both of them on if I can. 
It's pretty good for TPU. Yeah, and I got some TPU I need to print. Or I don't have TPU. I need some TPU. But I have some parts I need to print for my... Uh, uh, the speakers I'm making. I'm doing the, the Element series of speakers from Paul. Polymate 3D. Um, he's got them up on printables. I wish I had the link. I would send it to you guys real quick. But I do not. Uh, sorry. Okay, so there is BL Touch. And let's add in the other file real quick here. Uh, there it is. All right. Vanguard BL Touch mount. Yep, there's the two pieces. And Vanguard deal touch mount. Um, slice works. Hey, um, this also has that end stop on it, or has the extension that that bit on it that extends out is also for the end stop too, right? So it'll do everything all in one shot. Just want to make sure. Uh, can print these in PLA? Yeah, not a problem. We'll do. Boom. Boom speakers. Yep, I'm doing the 3D printed speakers. Uh, Raymond, if you go to uh, printables and look up uh, Polymate 3D, P O L Y M A T E 3D, you'll see Polymate Paul. He uh, has a couple of different versions on there. Uh, the big block in the surface uh, is what triggers the end stop. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will print both of these parts here real quick. Let me go ahead and throw them on the old slicer. Um, let's see here. Uh, throw some supports under here real quick. I am using the super slicer, so... I probably should use Prusa slicer, to be honest with you, but I don't have the profile for the bear in there. Reuse the same screws? Okay. You can remove the fan grill and mount this. Yep. That's what I will do. Pull this guy right off. Put the two screws back in. Put that on there. It'll have the little block on the side. And then we'll have that spot for the BL Touch to screw into. The only thing I'm wondering is, which way is the best way to print this thing? Would it be easier to print it on the flat? Here. Okay, so let me squeeze in here real quick. We'll move the actual BL touch part out. But uh, printing this thing, um, easiest way, print it this way on this face. And let it print up and away. The only thing is you're going to put some supports in for the logo there. Or lay it on flat or leave it like it is and just throw supports on it. Probably just leave it like this and throw some supports at it, huh? Probably the best way to do it. The only place you need to put a little extra supports under here so you can knock that out. And then the rest of it should all print or in here, of course. Okay. Oh, reverse it. Flip it over. Gotcha. Okay. So, click here. Boom. Boom. There we go. There we go. Print it like that, and then minor, uh, minimal support then this way. Got it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. So I think now that should print off and up by itself. The only place you need to put some supports is right here. Gotcha. No supports needed? Oh, okay. Because I figure this part here will be just printing in midair when it gets here. So... Unless you mean put it on this face. You mean put it on the the large back face? Because then, yeah, I can see where that could print out and no supports. So, you can just put it on this big flat surface here. So, like this. And then it should just build out as it goes. So, there we go. We'll print it that way.
ads. Sorry, Raymond. Somebody want to be nice and gift a sub? Raymond would probably love that. It's uh, Ram Online or Raymond Line. 79, the last of a, a great generation. 70s. Unless you were born outside the 70s, then you would say that generation's probably the best or that, that decade. There's a drink. All right. So we'll leave that like that. And this guy like this, let's get him situated. Boom. I'm going to beef up support a little bit. I'm going to go 23%. Why not? Uh, let's change that to BA uh, transfer. And general P or generic PLA is fine. Let's go back to the quality. And again, just transfer. All right. So there is that and that. Let's give it a quick slice and see how long that's going to take with BA. Probably an hour and a half, it says. Which, eh, you know, we're printing two parts. We need to get it done. So, I don't want to go crazy speed profile because I don't have one made yet, but I need to. So, at some point, we will. But for right now, got an hour and a half. I think we can hang out for an hour and a half. It's only, what, 10 after 6 my time. So, we'll, we'll get this guy up. We'll play around in the software or in the slicer while we're waiting so let me swap filament real quick uh yeah we got to swap filament because that's iron fill i don't i don't want to use iron fill it'd be nice and heavy and bulky right oh crap i'm showing my email sorry guys don't look let's go back to this one there we go probably should do that first but that's okay not that i'm super duper worried because not like there was much there uh, that's how you can tell I'm out. I'm out of uh, I'm out of shape. I'm out of out of everything. Um, do, 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 BA. There we go. Preheat. PLA. Ooh, that fan is mad. I gotta replace that fan. I keep forgetting that fan is is on its last leg. Can you guys hear this thing over here? Let me come over here. Can you hear this? <laughs> there we go blow the crap out of it. I gotta get, I gotta replace those fans. It's the 4010 blower fans on the uh, Omni Drop. So, get some 4010 fans. 24 volt 4010 fans. Oh! Pop my mic off. Thank you guys for putting up with me right now. But it is great to be here. You have to step out. Alright. Thanks for stopping by. Slice works. 3D. I hope you have a great one. Thank you very much. Um, pretty sure I'm going to be doing some some stuff YouTube wise, which is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more cleaner than crazy streams. So, but we'll put something together for YouTube, a little little you know before and afters thing. Oh, we'll do. We'll do. Everybody tell Sliceworks goodbye. Bye, Sliceworks. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for giving me this for a, a uh, giving me this to check out, try out, and see how it will go. I know it's going to be awesome. Like I said, I had pretty good luck with it myself uh, on other brands, the similar shape and style. So it's going to be fun. Get that out of there, throw that in there, because why not? Uh, drop this through here. It's the little bit of proto pasta that I actually have. What's this one? Oh, that's my uh, just a roll of black. I already have a couple rolls of black already out, so let's go. Let's go with some prusament because that's what I got right here. Made it. Even if I didn't make it, you wouldn't know, guys, because you couldn't see. Let's get this loaded up. I need some cap tubes and see if I can get some black. Reverse Bowden. Get this. There we go. 
I'm I am gonna be happy there with you. Let's get this cleaned off real quick, guys. I am uh I am eleven printer strong right now. The uh V two I am thinking after seeing Jim's video and knowing that three D fused is out there, maybe we do a uh video on that, but I want to give some printers away at some point. I've got, again, 11. I've got some that are projects, and if anybody in the community, um, maybe in the community is interested in project printers, uh, yeah. All right, let me get back into the slicer here real quick. Boom, and boom, and upload and print. There we go. Sent to the printer. You have enough projects already yes no monkey i know i'm 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 with you i'm actually going to be breaking apart the uh a net right there i already stripped some parts off of this but the a net a8 plus is going to be getting stripped down um i can use the rails and some other stuff for another printer so basically it's going to be a uh, tear it apart and put it together on another printer uh it does have an skr2 um skr2 with uh 2209s in there so take those out put those in or put that in the uh um probably the rook 2020 build there's uh some rods there that i can cut down to finish up that part of it and then i just need to get the um uh linear rails which i have some linear rails here i'm not sure if they're the right ones i'll have to find them again and see if they're the right ones that will work and if they are then i've got linear rails i'll just have to kind of move the remove the bearing so i'll have to get some bearing block uh some of the little transitions to pull the, the bearings off uh, then cut the rails down to size uh, break out the old chop saw cut the rails down to size get those cleaned up and then work on getting those mounted to the top of the 2020 frame and i'm wondering if anybody who is into the rook series and i know that there's like the little panda mini if anybody has attempted or has thought about putting a panda mini mount on the rook 2020 i don't think it should be that hard to do so i'm thinking maybe print the panda mini parts and see if i can retrofit that onto or just fit that onto the rook 2020 then i would just need to purchase a a uh, hot end one of the bamboo labs uh, hot ends to put on there be pretty great i'm practicing my pausing technique guys that way I can pull the ums and ahs out of my my screen. So when I pause, instead of going um while I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say, if I pause and there's a gap, understand it's because I don't want to say a um or an uh. Working on a friend's Ender 3 Pro. And adding the Mercury 1.1 mod with the new, new, new board pie hot end and five inch screen and clipper steam pool nice my big tree tech hdmi 5 i think took a crap and i'm pretty sure when it did it may have just killed at least two maybe three of my boards or i will have to reinstall the os on them and see if it did something Okay, so that's got about an hour and a half to go, and tidy up some wiring. Oh no, Mercury mod is good. You have an Ender 3 Pro turned Mercury, sacked it, or sacked it, but it's a good printer. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm thinking the Soulful SV05 is basically the ender you know ender five so it's like 170 bucks right now i don't have 170 bucks but 170 bucks it's basically the same printer 
figure maybe I'll acquire one of those and you know, put it to work. Um, give me a second here. I know I'm trying to cut out the ums and ahs, guys, so don't don't get mad at me when I do it. Give me a second here. Soul 3D. Printers. Oh, 159. Yeah, 169 it says. Okay, so it's 169. It's that 159, but it's 169 from US to US only. 169 for the Soulful SVO5. Give me a second to throw this over here. And let's click on that. And there you go. So 169, as you can see, so 169, it is pretty much the Ender 5, Ender 5 Pro. And then of course they've got their information. It's got the metal direct drive extruder. It's got a CR touch, 20, uh, 220, 220, 300, 32 bit silent board, flexible build sheet. It's got that Y axis or Y axis with the dual stepper in the back. It's got the belt tensioner. It does say it has resume print, but we all know that resume print is kind of a scary gimmicky thing. But there it is. So 169. And if you notice, it does say right there on it, Creality 4.2.2 board. So it's saying it's got the Creality 4.2.2 board. If anybody's wanting to send me one, feel free to purchase it, send it to me. I want to do uh, maybe either a Mercury upgrade to it or get the 3D fused um, linear rail kit that Jim put out the video on today. That if you guys noticed, the uh, he routed the belt wrong. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that or not. For those of you who saw the video, he routed the belt wrong on the left side. He did not go over the pulley. He went over the support, <laughs> the uh, spacer. So it, it sticks way out. Let's see how this is looking. Uh... It's not looking ugly, so we will let it ride. However, there was a booger that got in the way, so let's get that booger off of there. Okay, with that print, Ender 3 V2 down there that I, I, I have picked up. If any of you guys want to help with uh, this, this right here. If any of you guys want to help with that, I know it's a big number, but again, driving, four days in a hotel, food... If anybody can help with that, greatly appreciate it. At the same time, too, if you can help with this here, you're going to get some uh, additional, like, sponsor -y stuff and videos and things like that. Maybe get your name put out there as a sponsor to, you know, sponsor the trip thank you type thing. Like, any videos I do, I'll, I'll roll it in the end saying, you know, thanks to these people for sponsoring my trip and making this possible. So if you want, if you want some shout-out credit, there, there's, there's a, a way to do it, you know. Just got or just got brain fart. Think I do my rails different. Got crazy idea. Nice, nice, nice. Crazy ideas. VZ bot way. Nice. Yeah, VZ bot would be nice. I'm like everybody, man. Once I see something, I want to. I want to do it. I want to build it. I want to play with it. So I'm. I'm. I'm right there. Let's get this thing all powered back up now, though, so we can uh, get into the firmware and start making some firmware changes. I probably should plug the BL Touch in at least, right? So let's get the underside tidied up. Let me switch back to this one here. Get that BL Touch plugged back in. So tip this over. Ooh, what do we? There we go. Let's uh, <coughs> let's disconnect this wire here. Put 
pull that loose. And because this thing's printed like hot garbage anyway, look at that. It's just some old filament that has since dried out. Get my screwdriver here. We'll take this apart. Get this off of here. Sorry, I know you guys can't see what I'm doing at the moment, which is fine. I'm just taking some screws out here. See? That's a nice looking hot end. Yeah, we'll see how it uh, turns out, Mr. Strand. I'm hoping it's it's looking pretty good. I'm in, I'm I'm liking it so far, and and I'm hoping that. Granted, my stream looks like hot garbage, and I know it. And I'm sorry. Give you guys better content. I promise. I just need to get back into the swing of things. But I. Uh, I got to work on some better cameras first and foremost. So once my trip to Rocky Mountain is funded, because I want to get out to Rocky Mountain and see everyone, I really want to get out there. I have a hotel room booked. I have a buddy of mine that's going along for the ride. Uh, he's driving. I'm going along for the ride. So bonus. But... Let's get these plugged back in and get this run back up to the top. So, first, we plug in. Let's turn this a little bit so I can see a little better. Okay. So, Z and stop. There's these two right here. So, black and white, Z and stop. And these two are, these three are servo I think is what I used was the servo pretty sure that's what I used because that doesn't look like it's but yep there we go okay now we'll pull these wires up and around so we have them together let's organize this little actually there's something I'm going to do you can choose to do this if you wish but the extruder motor we're not using these wires anymore. There's no point in having the clutter. Give me some back some of my space. So we pull that off of there. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Let's pull that out of there. That stupid end cap fell off again. We flatten our wires, tuck our wires, and make all of our wires fit nice. There's that. There's that. There's that. Let's get all of these right here, balled up nicely and get a zip tie on them, huh? Let's see here. Yeah. Let's get a zip tie on all that so that it tucks away nicely. Get a, a zipper here. There we go. Okay. Cut that tab. There we go. Now, pull all this off to the side. Lay the two power wires against the nice little plastic piece that I printed many, many eons ago. Took all that in. Push this off to the side here. So it's out of sight, out of mind. This will run down and out the back. And then these two can run along here. And we'll put them down under the bigger wires. That way our bigger wires, with all of their extra protection, are up against the cover when we put it back on here. Hmm. That's right. Hmm. Dang it, Dan. Dang it, Dan. Fan one. You know what? We're just not going to plug that back in right now. We'll get back in there. I want to do some stuff here. So, I kind of forgot, and this is my bad, that fan one was the case fan for underneath here. But it's on all the time, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we're just going to leave it on the hot end for now. 
I already put it on there. I'll plug this guy back in later. I will flip-flop the fans at a later time. Because right now, I feel as though I need to get to firmware. I mean, we got time, but I don't want to... I don't necessarily want to get into that right at the moment. Okay. Jeepers, creepers. That is a lot of argumentativeness. Let's go in a little bit deeper. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers, let's go in a little deeper. If I take that plastic bit out that I printed, it would give me just a little bit more space. Guys like staring at uh, silly Dan doing dumb things. Hold on here. Let me see here. You gonna put a clipper on? It's already got a clipper on it. Yeah, Bob has some clothes on for now. You know, so the question, but yeah, no, clippers already on this one. So I'm gonna go in and we'll edit the config file and play around in clipper. So yes, I can just change some pins around too in clipper, but for the moment. I don't have it plugged into anything because I kind of sort of should have changed some things, but didn't. <laughs> like how I said that? I should have, but I didn't. I admit my faults. Thing cannot be said for everyone. There we go. There's one screw in. It's a long guy right here. There we go. God. There we go. Just had to move down a little bit. There we go. Got it. But yeah, it's already been clipperized, so that part's done, Mr. Strand. Just need to go in. I'm going to figure out what the rotational distance for this hot end to. Anybody know what the, in clipper, what the focus hot end would have used for its rotational distance? You're off to work? Aw, Mr. Strand, that sucks. I mean... I'm glad you got to go to work because work is a good thing and money is good and everybody loves money. But it sucks you got to leave me. But that's okay. I mean, you, you go do you things, man. Make that money. I'm... I'm... Kind of super pumped. Line some stuff up there real quick. There we go. Okay. Ta-da. Let me grab this real quick. Because one of the things I really, really want to do is kind of clean this poor thing up. It is so dusty, dirty, abused. My, my poor kiddos, man. They just left it sit. Ah. Cleaned up here a little bit some more of that dust and dirt garbage out of there one of these days maybe I'll just tear it all the way down and put it all the way back together but I doubt it there we go there we go Ta -da! of course our Z end stop, aka 
the probe. Should zip tie all that together real quick. And then move this under, bring these up. Because this will only need to go to. Um, oh! Dang it! Had a wire break. Had a wire break, guys. Look at that. Oh. Dang it. Ah, well, we'll just redo it. So we'll just take this off of here, take this off of here. This thing will probably be mad at me and tell me that my Z end stop is tripped. That's fine. We can cheat the system and make it work. Ha ha. But anyway, let's get this stuff plugged in here. Uh, one USB cable. Ta-da. Yes, it's the dreaded blue USB cable, guys. I know. Another longer USB cable. Let's... Uh, unravel all this. Let me uh, grab a adapter here. I know where I've got one. <laughs> Let's see. What's the... What is the output on this one? Yeah, not enough. Not enough, but it'll work for right now. Put that in. Okay, let's get power to this thing real quick here. I really wish that, uh, you know, more awesomeness would come. And I apologize, guys. I am, I am, I am a very apologetic person because I did stupid things for a while there because I needed to get myself back in check. You guys suffered for it, and now you guys are suffering again. So, thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Thank you for being here. I will continue to thank you, thank you, thank you. Over and over and over again. Is Marlin... Let's see here. In Marlin, I think... I use 309 for the E-steps. Okay. I will, I will take a look, Mr. Strand. I will take a look. Besides, I could probably find a uh, clipper config for an Odin and then snag that out of there. I'm pretty sure that there were several people who had clipper ones out there. So, it was nice of uh, Sliceworks to swing by. I always like it when they can pop in. But there we go. Now, let's bring this guy back up real quick. There we are. All right. Things that should work. Oh, wait. Crap. No. Uh, let me stop. Restart firmware. Restart. I did something dumb. I didn't mean to start a print, and I started a print. I wanted to get everything moving. That's all. I, I meant to hit, you know, home all to make sure that it would home because I'm going to have to trip the switch over here, though, because this doesn't have its little mount on it yet. But it will. It will. It will. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Plug back in. We'll restart. Let's see if our screen comes back up now. There we go. Screen's back up. All right. Now let's move this back. And let's get ready to home all. So we'll hit home all. 
let this guy come across, and then I'll hit the switch when it gets close. Okay. Oh, <laughs> ZN stop. Oh, wait. And stop still triggered after retract. Oh, okay. It's just telling me X is re it has been uh, triggered after that. So that well, was because, silly me, let's back this up. Keep my finger right here, let it slap my finger and hit the switch and then back up. It'll slap my finger. And now it'll freak out for Z because the uh, probe is not on it. And, yep, BL touch is failing because, again, BL touch is not on it because one wire is broke. So I have to redo that end. But so far, there's all of this goodness. Now let's get some heat in this hot end. The park cooling fan is current, or the hot end fan is currently on and running. We'll make sure park cooling fan works too. So let's throw some heat in it. Go to the preheats. We'll preheat for PLA and we'll see if it preheats. It is going up. So that's good. Bed's preheating, hot end's preheating. Let me see. Yep. Got the sock on there, but I do feel it. It is warm. I'm going to make sure it gets up to temp. We will have to run a PID tune. But this is just to see if we can dial in the uh, extruder motor. So let's find a filament that we can pull through it. Let's grab some good old Creality White. It's a Creality printer. It's a slight works hot in. Let's use some Creality White. It's a little easier to see marks on there when we make our marks for checking our extrusion values. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Direct drive. We need to move something real quick here. Unscrew this real quick. Unscrew this real quick. Flip it around. I'm going to leave it way over here for now, but... Right. There we go. Okay. Really don't need that for a direct drive. Oh, dad gum. This, this roll of filament fell in. Ooh, it's cracked to, all cracked to get out. Okay. Because that will be unnecessary. Okay, let's see here. Push it in. Feed the filament down. Oh, uh, filament runout sensor is connected, but is kind of unnecessary at the moment. Okay. Let's just see what happens. Is this new printer or rebuild? It is a rebuild. We're installing the Sliceworks. Um, this is the Sliceworks um, direct drive kit. It's $70 on the website. And it comes with everything, wires, all that. And because it is based off of the basically the Focus, the, the Focus Odin, it has the filament runout sensor built in. So another nice thing, it's just a matter of adding the filament runout sensor to the uh, config. And since I am working in, let me switch to the right screen here. There we go. Since I am working in Clipper with this, you know, it's a little easier to make some changes. Because, uh, for instance, right now I'm going to tell it to 50 at 10 and I'm going to tell it to extrude. And we'll see. Does filament go in or out? Huh. It is pulling, but very, very slowly. I'm going to try something. Let's go in here. Let's go to printer config. Scroll down to our extruder. And current rotation distance is 33.5. Let's just copy this part real quick. Right click copy. Go back here. Control V for paste. Return control B. Get this plastic bag out the way. And let's do a five point or six point five just to start. Save and restart. Let's just reboot. Yes, 
I am going to go crazy. I am going to start down at six and a half. But that's because I'm pretty, pretty hopeful. We will find out momentarily, though. Let's go back into our presets. Pretty for PLA. And let's tell it to 50 at 10. Yeah, let's do 50 at 5 now and extrude. No. <clears throat> okay, well, let's get that stupid kink out the end of this. There we go. Let's get it pushed all the way through, huh? There we go. Okay. Now let's try this again. Yep, it is going backwards. It did push it out, so it did go backwards. So let's go back in and invert. Printer, extruder, direction pin is already inverted. So let's uninvert. Let's save and restart. Go back to dashboard. Wait for it to restart. And then while we're waiting, let's push this filament back in while it's still hot. There we go. Pull that out. And now let's re-preheat to PLA temp. And scroll back down. We got 50 at 5 extrude. Hey, look at that. I'll mark it and we will run the test once it's done, of course. I'm going to let this pull through and we'll see how it does. Then we'll let it cool down and we'll give it a PID tune. I'm waiting for the BL touch mount to, and end stop mount to, to print for this so we can put the BL touch and the end stop on there. Those won't be done for, it says 20%, so it's 20% done right now, so it'll be a little while. But we can at least work on getting the filament runout sensor. We can work on getting that taken care of, so we actually have filament runout on here, too. I am using the EN stop pin, so that'll be kind of easy to figure out. Uh, now it's time to measure and uh, push. So... Let's switch cameras here to this guy. Big full and in your face. Got my trusty, dusty metal uh, metric on one side. You know, freedom units on the other. Looking to see if I have a different marker, but all I got is the fat daddy. So, not a big deal. We will mark this. The nice part is, the top of that is all flat right there, so it's real easy to get a base part to start off of. And I'm going to mark it at a few different numbers. We will mark it at 100, 110, 120, and because we're playing with fire here, we're going to go all the way up to 130. There we go. So you guys can kind of see the dots there. I'll move you guys up as I send it through, but we are going to tell it to do 100. So, it likes to do it in 50 millimeter increments, so we'll do extrude, extrude. And we'll scroll back up here and we'll watch it come down together. So I did two extrudes at 50 millimeters a piece. We'll see how close I was on my yes. Wow, I was off quite a bit. So let's see where we're at here. We are about 19, it looks like, 19 millimeters. Yeah, we are, eh, I'm going to say where I put my dot was right over the line, so 19 millimeters off.
Anybody good with rotational distance numbers? Remember I went 6.5? So I did 6.5 and we're off by 20. So anybody anybody good with math want to help me out with that real quick so I don't have to try and do the equation? I will greatly appreciate the assistance. I'm going to sit down though for a minute. I'm going to close my door here because it's getting a bit brisk and I want my print to not fail. So... But yeah, let me pull this out. All the tacos I had earlier smelled delicious. Let's get that off of there. But yeah, so if anybody can do that math real fast and tell me. Otherwise, you guys be forcing me. You'd be forcing my hand to do some math, some mathy stuff. I'm thinking because I missed it by 20 and I did six and a half, I'll probably go down to six if, if nothing else. I, I usually like to play the hunt game anyway, see how close I can get. So let's go to, let's go to printer config. Scroll down here to extruder. We did six, five. I'll do six. I'll do six on the nose. Nah, the hell with it. Don't worry about it, guys. I'm doing six on the nose. We'll see what you guys come up with, but I'm doing six on the nose. If anybody is working on the map. If you're not, don't worry about it. Like, uh, what's his face said? We'll do it live! Cutting out the bad word part, though. But we'll do it live. Alright, preheat, PLA, remark, and we'll hit it again for another, for another hundred, and, uh, we'll do, we'll do a hundred and a hundred and ten, because we know that we shouldn't be that far off. So 100, 110, and we'll do 120 anyway. There we go. I think I got somebody coming out to say hey, so we'll see what happens. Um, all right, so 50 at 5, extrude, extrude. There we go. Two extrudes. It is pulling. We want to be right there when we're done, guys. So see what happens. Let's see if I was better with the six or if I should go somewhere in the middle. You guys see it coming down there? It stopped way early, so did it not pick up the two? Let's let's extrude one more time and see what happens. Because I think oh I'm retracting now. Damn it. Alright, well extrude Oh, it popped it out. Jesus, I gotta redo it now. The suspense is killing me. Wolfman, I agree. The suspense is killing me too. We're gonna get this a going. Wow, I just rocketed right down to it, but due to the the craziness that is my life and the stupid things I do, let's try that again. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. So here we go. Boom. So we mark again at 100, 110, 120, which is actually 10 centimeters, all 11 centimeters, and 12 centimeters. Because it's centimeters, not meters, but that's okay. There we go. Marked and extrude. And it is extruding. And we'll hit extrude now one more time with a little gap in between. And we'll see what it's doing now. Let's get that get that off of there. There we go. You can see it going there. Why would it have stopped that far away? How far away is that? Let's see here. That is farther away. It's at 25 now should have went closer because it was at 19 before and we went smaller on the number and the smaller the number the uh, closer it gets right isn't it in, in there the smaller it is the more it pushes the bigger it is the less it pushes so let's go into printer let's go down to extruder uh, rotational distance let's make it 4.0 then yeah, let's just make it four. Let's see how crazy that goes. Yay! 
I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a back and forth, back and forth kind of guy. I'll, I'll, I'll play around in the firmware, just changing things constantly. There's equations in math you can do, but all right. Here we go. Oh, that's in freedom units. We don't want to use freedom units because 3D printing doesn't like freedom units. There we go. Our three marks. And let's see. Just change the number arbitrarily until it gets close. Then I attempt to do math. <laughs> yeah, Wolfman, I'm the same way. Or should I say Wolf, Wolf Arms Crab Man? Yeah, Wolf Arms Crab Man or Wolf Crab Man Arms. I always mess up your name on purpose. And I do it because I think it's funny. And if it's annoying to you, well, it's funny to me. So hopefully you enjoy the fact that I get enjoyment out of it. Let's see. Oh, no. Yeah, it'll only let me do it up to 50. That's right. So that's why I keep doing the twos. So let's extrude. And I'm going to see what only 50 mils did there, because that looked like it was uh, chugging real quick. Well, let's extrude again. Let's see if four gets us even closer. Jeez. It looks like it might be, yeah, closer to to four. Wow. Where'd four get me? Because it looks like four got me down even more. So cheapers, man. Oh, you know what? Let me restart the firmware. I do remember every now and then when you play around with it like that, you got to restart the firmware. So... Let's do a doo -doo 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 -doo, restart firmware. We changed the number quite a bit, and it doesn't seem to be fluctuating very much. So we'll do a quick reboot on the firmware. We'll see what happens. All right. Preheat for PLA again. Come down here. I'm just going to hit the extreme button once just to see if it's like rocket in a way once you know i'd rather waste a little extra filament here now than be dreading it later also there we go now let's uh okay so we got 120 all right and those lines are in in general in the general, in the gist. Okay. One extrude, two extrude. Let's see. How much closer do we get after that? Got my hand on the filament because I want to feel if it starts to like skip or drag. And yeah, it's still stopping way short. So even after that, Stopping at about 20 mils, and that was turning that way down. So let me go back into my config. Let's go to the printer. Scroll down. Extrude. It's at 4.0. Let's go to 2.8, just for giggles. Okay, 2.8. If I've ever done it, I've gotten Sharpie all over my fingers every single time. Uh, well... So far, I'm, I'm Sharpie free so far, which is weird because I did put my finger right behind the Sharpie when I dotted the uh, filament. So, but I also dotted it against the ruler. Now I've gotten smarter over the years and I've learned that I just use the ruler. So target temp, PLA, and let's mark it. See, I, I, I do this. Stick the ruler up behind, especially with this hot end, it makes it nice. You know, you can just hold the filament against it and then boop, boop, and boop. There we go. And then I didn't touch anywhere near it. Oh, you know what? I jinxed myself. I went to put the cap back on. <laughs> I went to put the cap back on and got my finger when I put the cap on. So I was talking too much smack, being a smart ass, and it bit me. So. <laughs> 
All right. Anyway, here we go. Ready? And 50. Extrude one. Extrude two. So there we go. Let's watch. We're watching for that top set of lines right there. We're going to see how close they get this time. It's going to be weird if it's that far Like, I'm at 2.8 right now. It stopped again, and it's stopping high. At least, I'm thinking it's stopping high. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's still stopping at 20 mils. I don't know why. I moved my, I moved my rotational distance so many freaking times. Let's go back in here. Extruder. Rotational distance is down to 2.8 filament diameter. Oh, I got a phone call coming in, guys. Give me just a minute. All right, guys. Sorry about that. The missus was calling to check in on me. She was uh, sleeping a little bit when I got home. Hmm. My rotational distance is only in one place as far as I know. Let's go through this thing and see if I hit a rotational distance somewhere that's conflicting with rotational distance. But if I did, it should error out and tell me that. So I don't think that my rotational distance is the problem there. Let's just try something for giggles. Let's go to... Okay. Actually, let's do a Google real quick here. Let's go here and let's type in Focus Odin 5 Clipper Con Config. Let's see what somebody else has for their Clipper Configs. Uh, Focus Odin 5. Well, there's the dog. I think it's completely I think the, um, I think the battery. Scooter? Yeah, I think your scooter battery took a crap. No, because like on it, it says, um, I'm pretty sure I left it on when I charged it. Yes. You guys see, my daughter just comes out. She loves to chat. So guys, say hi to my daughter. She's waving. Give me a second here. Let's get rotational distance. It says the rotational distance should be 33.2. Two, no, hey, don't, don't, babe. I said, don't quit singing. Hey, hey, quit singing. Because I'm streaming, I don't want to get in trouble for streaming and having copyrighted content, you butt. So let's see here. But my testing based on measuring the actual length of the filament fed was 100 millimeters was requested, found 96.6 to be more accurate so 200 times 16 divided by 96.6 equals 33.2 and why his hand is covered in sharpie up oh, charity left ha -ha. so i don't know if i believe that 33.2 is right but I mean, for the sake of where we're at right now, 33.5 is where I was, and it was barely moving. This is 33.02. So, all right, let's try. Let's try what the internet says. We'll, we'll see what it does. Save and restart. Go to Carter Lake dashboard and 
Let's see what we get out of this. Let's see what we get. We get PLA. And scroll down. And let's see here. Oh, well. It is moving. I don't know how accurately. <coughs> Here, let's just go at 50 mils right now. It's because it's one click and we're good. So let's just hit it at 50 right there. The top of that crazy long dot I just put there, let's extrude again. We're going to watch that crazy long dot there. I wish this camera had better focus than it does. Yeah, that's way too short. Let's see here. So let's go 50, and it went 30, or it went 15. So it only moved 15. So let's go back and look for another config. Focus on five. Unable to connect now. Help. Do, 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 do. Set it up. Anybody? Be here. Put the phone. Set it up. Create my sign pad. Offer our mini. Connecting folks on five to building. Print. Uh, the five quarter. There we go. Let's see. Helpless. I wouldn't find. We have touch. Um, let's, let's see this first one here from last year. Let's see. GitHub and printer config. Yeah. Um, well, this file I just looked at. Oh, here's one. It says eight is the rotational distance. Uh, steps per millimeter, 200 times 16. Well, I guess I should pay attention and ask myself, do I know? But, all right, it is saying eight rotational distance. So we can try going back to eight and see if that'll do anything. So let's go back here. Let's go back to machine. Let's get big. Scroll back down. Yes, you guys got to be enjoying that view, huh? If I did this, we have crazy hair. I need a haircut. Yes, I need a haircut. All right, so let's go back. Reheat again. Then let's go to. Okay, it's heating up. Let's grab this. Spaghetti. Okay, so there's 50. There's 100, 110, 120. Who did what? Oh, Wolfman, thank you for the prime sub. I love taking Jeff Bezos' money. You guys know that. He don't need it. He can just give it to me. Greatly appreciate it, my man. Greatly appreciate it. They hit you with commercials, so you're like, he can have the free one. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I'll take it. Thank you very much. All right. Now that we got that, let's uh, go to the extrude. And let's see here. So 50 is this guy right here. It pulled past. So. Let's hit it with another one, just to see where it goes. This one here should be 100, and we'll see how it does. Oh, wait. Actually, it didn't pull past. That's pretty good. I think, by Joe, I think we got it. Now I just got to wait for the mount to finish printing back there on the pair. Swap out this fan grill. 
put the new fan grill on, put the BL touch in, and then that'll be my end stop switch. And then that, and then we can just figure out what our BL touch offsets are in all the directions. And then we can redo the probe and make probey probey happy happy so that nozzle and probe are at proper heights. And then we can make this biscuit eating bulldog fly some filament. And what do you think, guys? Should I should I look at doing a a kit for the? Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'm just wondering, guys. Should I uh, look at getting a linear rail kit for this thing for both of them? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, maybe. Like with this hot end on here, I got to get. One of my uh, little guys out. And then this thing, my son wanted it. He got it and put it on here. It's great, but it doesn't fit snug, so it keeps moving. It's just one of those printed that sits in the channel. It's it's fine to have up there, but I think I might take it off. But holy shit, I'm glad I didn't have any of the stuff in the foreseeable future. Oh, well. You enjoy doing all this stuff before and I'm glad you did it. Apparently subscribing mid-commercial doesn't stop them. Yes, yes it doesn't. You uh, refresh the page. So refresh the page and then they'll pick up the fact that you've subbed. Installing new hot ends, BL touches, firmware, etc. Yes, yes. Wolfman, I, I miss doing this kind of stuff and I'm hoping more companies will jump on board and want to, you know, maybe help me do these streams and show you guys gives you guys something to check out and at the same time if you guys like what you see hopefully you guys will go buy stuff from them i always tell you guys and have for quite some time now about sliceworks tells you about them and, and buying stuff um we did some stuff together in the past with a christmas giveaway and things like that and i'm not going to be doing a christmas giveaway this year I will stream for Christmas and hang out with you guys, but I will not be asking companies uh, if they want to sponsor anything for Christmas. Um, being the financial situation I am in, I cannot afford to ship things to anyone. I cannot afford to uh, purchase and give things away. So this Christmas, my stream will just be a let's hang out and chat stream under the Maker Mind Nexus uh, name now. Uh, Maker Mind Nexus, for those who don't know, while we're kind of sitting here and waiting for a print to finish, the reason I switched to Maker Mind Nexus is because several reasons. The biggest one being I did the DB3D thing because everybody was doing their initials and throwing 3D on it, and that was what they were doing. I, for the most part, I'm not just a 3D printing channel. I don't do just 3D printing content. I am very big into ADHD with all of the different stuff where one day my brain says do this, and then for a while my brain says do this, and then for a while my brain says do this. So when I'm doing streams, as the ADHD is going and things are flowing, it just kind of makes me move a certain way. And I don't want to as the Clipper guy. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, Clipper is, again, it's SBCs. Um, I had a lot of good luck in the past with Libre. I'm hoping to work with Libre some more going forward under Maker My Nexus. I know that I was hoping that there was going to be some stuff coming. I'm not sure what's going on there. I will either, you know, get funds and buy boards and still continue to use them because I, I like Libre. Libre is a small company that's wanting to come in like crazy, not just into 3D printing, but into the whole SBC thing. And it's cool that we were able to work together on stuff in the past. I, I am hoping to get my hands on a sweet potato as well as what else was there? Uh, your first stream was you, oh, yeah, programming Clipper for the Ender for BC and Nomi. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Clipper Dan. Yeah, Clipper Dan, you know, but it, it's it's a thing. Uh, I love playing around with Clipper. I like how you can, you know, basically rob from Peter to pay Paul to do different things within Clipper. And the cool part is once you build up a set of, of, of files, it's kind of universal. It's move it over here, change a few numbers, maybe change some pins. 
and throw it at the printer and you're good to go and you don't have to recompile everything upload it see that you forgot something like when the stepper when it was extruding when it was you know retracting instead of extruding i just went in deleted the you know exclamation point restarted it and filament moved the other direction i didn't have to go in find it recompile it re-upload it re you know it's just a lot easier that way. so i like clipper for that reason it's it's once <coughs> There we go. Once you get past the learning curve of Clipper, Clipper is, in my opinion, way more user-friendly. It's just getting past that learning curve. It is kind of annoying that you have to have a separate board to run Clipper on, but with the way companies like Mello, Mello's got that board now that has pretty much everything slammed onto it, just like outright boom there's a board with everything i think it's mellow am i wrong is it mellow or is it M mks MK one, one of the two and i know big tree tech has been doing a lot with the cb ones and the um with their manta series of boards and i love the manta series i've got a manta in that one i've got a manta in that one right there and uh i would probably manta all the things if i could because i do like the idea of put a cb1 on it use it and then if something new or better comes out you can snip snap and you know copy your config files and you're back up and running you know that is the other wonderful part is printer goes down as long as you backed up your configs you reinstall clipper swap your uh upload all your config files and you're back up and printing in 15 20 minutes instead of <coughs> having to go through all the headaches and i mean that's that's copying all of your macro files and everything you copy everything down you save it you hold it i've been known to dump things up to github so that if i'm ever out and about and doing things i can just pull them off github real quick put them back on so murphs earths rocky mountain rep rat fest uh 3d printopia now not earth um but yeah i mean those files are up in the cloud they're easy to get to so just Upload it to GitHub. It's in there waiting for you. You go grab them, pull them down, unzip the file, throw them on the SD card. You're back up and running in, you know, under an hour versus maybe more than that to recompile Marlin. Because now the old Marlin file you had when you load it up in, you know, if you made changes, whatever the case may be. It's just, I'm Clipper. I like Clipper. I got Clipper, Clipper, Clipper. That one was running Clipper before I got rid of it. Uh, that one's Clipper. That one's Clipper. That will one day possibly be Clipper. I'm looking or thinking about making some changes there. Oh, sorry. There and Clipper in that. You know. Mm. Clipper. Uh, most likely going to be Clipper at some point. I For right now, I'm leaving it stock because there's some talk in the works of some content and some updates and upgrades and things so may leave it stock for now but clipperize it later so at some point that'll probably be clipper too i mean i don't know i'm just i'm clipper you don't have to you know i it's nothing against marlin it, it it really isn't i just after making the change to clipper and getting a little better with clipper and i'm a visual guy i can't really always tell you what to do but if i see it i can go and be like oh yeah you need to go here do this and do this but that's the the drawback to adhd dan see how my print's doing over there we are at 54 percent complete it says and the print is looking pretty schmexy, I must say. I am liking that. Printed it in the uh, Prusa Mint Galaxy Black. It is going to town here. I, I did beef up the infill. Uh, for those who popped in late, I did beef up the infill, but I did have, uh, or I did get uh, Sliceworks to send me the files for the 
a new fan mount for right here on the extruder. There's this metal guard here. You take that off. They've got a plastic one you screw on, you put your screws back in, and then you have a lock that will come over and make contact here, as well as let the BL Touch uh, mount. I don't know. Let's see. I got my ends and stuff. Let's, well, I'm sitting here talking and, you know, kind of annoying everybody. Let's see if we can get this out of here. There we go. Let's replace this broken end and get a new, new end on here so we can get this BL touch up and running quicker when the time comes, right? There we go. Shut away a little bit. Make sure I... Oh, stupid plastic plow. Oh, man. That damn gum plastic plow. I tell you, the plastic plow. No longer available. <coughs> Discontinued by the manufacturer. Apparently, Sliceworks is a pizza place. Yes, yes, yes. And forget it is an X. Wait, hold on. Yes, Sliceworks 3D with an X. Um, but yeah, it's Sliceworks with an X. Go check them out. Go buy something in the notes when you buy something from them. Make sure you put in there that you came to visit because of DB3D. Let them know that I am the reason. Let them know that I am out here still preaching the, uh, preaching the awesomeness that is Sliceworks. If anybody wants to go to Sliceworks and buy something for me, uh, KP3S, I would really like to get one for several reasons. One, I think it would be really awesome at work on my desk. And two, because I think it's a neat little printer. So if anybody wants to get me a KP3S or the KP3S Pro series that they offer, the Sliceworks edition, th that one's like a little bit more, but uh, that one would be fine too. We can clipperize it. So if anybody wants to, you can get me one and I'll clipperize it and I'll name it after you. So if you buy it and you send it to me, it gets named after you. So I could have a Wolfman Crab Arms printer if Wolfman Crab Arms wanted to buy me a printer. It is not required, Wolfman. You don't have to. I'm just saying, if you want to see a printer on my streams named Wolfman, you can. I won't stop you. Okay, let's see here. Okay. You wish you had to send people printer money? I'm uh, with you, brother. I am with you on that one. Maybe one day I'll have that kind of money. But for now, I would just like to have pay your bills money. Because there's a... Uh, some some not so good things going on on my end and uncle sam is partly to blame because you know hurry up and pay your taxes when you're late or when you owe but don't worry we'll tell you it'll delay your taxes by you know six to whatever months it is and then turn around and you know it's been you know nine months since i filed my taxes and still haven't gotten my return from this year so thank, thanks uncle sam I put in all the money, I filed my taxes, I put in all the stream money that I had come in, all that stuff, and then they turned around, audited us, and it's still the requested proof of employment for the year. I sent them copies of my subs, my white tape subs, all of that stuff, and we are still sitting here patiently waiting. But there we go. The wire has been recreated oh my sinuses are can you tell my sinuses are not having a great day today but then this will go like this and the BL touch will mount over here and that'll stay there this will be basically like like so we'll 
get this all together in some way. A couple of zip ties here, 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 and then like that. And then I'll zip tie everything else together down. But that should be good enough. Like I said, I'll, I'll work on getting these wires into, and then maybe poke a little hole in this. You guys can't really see it, but that's okay. You're preaching tax issues to a library or uh, a libertarian. LOL. <laughs> hey, Wolfman. All I'm saying is, I pay taxes. I owe taxes. I can't pay taxes if I don't have the money, and they owe me quite a bit. But yeah, there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, I just, you know. It is what it is. I just wish things would, you know, kind of get a little better. Let's see. Is that still hot? Okay. Did it cool down finally? It did. Okay, good. Now that that cooled down, let's run a PID tune on it. So let me throw this up out the way here. Just so it's up out the way. Oh, one thing I want to check. Scroll down. Yeah, the park cooling fan is not coming on. I have to make sure I got that plugged in right. Okay. We will have to check the part cooling fan and make sure everything is good there. But for right now, before... Wait. Let's, let's kick this thing all the way up. Huh. The beep works. Matt, what's up, MTB Matt J? The Illuminati. Illuminati. Hey, All right, PID extruder. There we go. Da Vinci one underscore zero. What's up? Nice to see you, Da Vinci. Da Vinci is now following. Da Vinci, thank you for the follow. Greatly appreciated. Let me kick back to here for you. We're just doing a PID auto tune now on the Clipperized Ender 3 Pro running the Sliceworks direct drive extruder. If you guys want to get one of those, uh, let me see if. Yeah, nope, that's wrong. Give me a second here it is sliceworks with an x guys so if you go to sliceworks with an x and then you look you'll find this guy right here copy boom paste the only thing i did find was my belt was a little too short so thankfully i had some belt on hand i just re-ran the belt zip tied it down called it good all your creality parts entered up in a box <laughs> nice da vinci nice i i i understand that um uh, as a guy who went through the the phases i had many enders uh, i've had four ender three pros uh gave two away then gave two more away then i have an ender three v2 which is sitting right here that i just got uh that would be a uh what happened was i got an ender 3 pro as my first printer I used that for years got us or used that for a few months got a second ender 3 pro because my wife liked the idea of christmas presents so let me let me go back here there we go so uh my wife liked one of the 3d printed parts i was making the lithophane light boxes my wife liked those thought they'd be cool for christmas for everybody i said i need a second printer because i cannot get everything done for all the family by christmas so i got a second printer one was printing straight lithophanes the other one was printing the box parts when i got done printing all the box parts and all the colors the way she wanted them for all the family then i kicked up lithophanes on both printers and had both printers running lithophanes pretty much non-stop Got all the boxes done and got them out to family about a week before Christmas. We got them all finished. So those are my first two Ender 3s. 
Uh, then from there, uh, things kind of blossomed and I got into different printers, different stuff, talking to people in the community, and now it's grown into this crazy 11 printers in my office. Some work, some don't, tearing some apart to, re you know, to build up others. Stuff like that, you know. All of his parts with his upgrades, most of the guts, but, uh, oh, most of the guts, but uh, the frame, yeah. And that's, that's the thing. Like, this one right here is my OG. This is like, this is my OG original first bought Ender 3 Pro. My, I gave it to one of my sons and got it back. So this is the OG, the original, the one that started it all for me. This is the Ender 3 uh, the Ender 3 Pro that started it all for me. So, all right. The PID Auto Tune is done. It is restarted. So, there we go. PID Auto Tune is done. I'm just waiting for those parts to finish up on the bear, and then we will slap them on here. I probably should have sent them it to the uh, K1, huh? The K1 probably could have kicked them out quicker. I bet you I could probably slice those files and throw them at the K1, and it may get them done even faster. You guys want to play a game of let's see what happens uh let's see here let's switch to speedy let's uh keep all right and let's go to k1 pla and k1 you know what uh yeah transfer there we go Let's flip that around. Boom, boom. There we go. All right. Let's slice it for now. How long does it say? It says one hour, two minutes. One hour, two minutes. Probably wouldn't hurt to have an extra set of parts, right? Let's see what color fill them with. What do we got here? Hold on. Let me see what DaVinci says. Uh, your first and only printer is still <laughs> still the DaVinci from 2014. Oh, man, DaVinci. We got to, we got to, you know. You had to redo P PID. Polysonic in it. Nice. Let me put pause like there. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. That's awesome. Uh, I'm sneaking back here to see that I have a filament that I do not want to print a structural part with. If you guess what it is, if you can't, it's a silk. <laughs> so let me minimize this real quick. Let's go to reality. And let's go to 4409, because that's the main sale, because I do have the rooted version. Boom! Rooted version. All right. Let's go into... Oh, i got to get my resets again. That's all right. Let's go... Shoot. Nope. Two, ten. That's all I need to pull, pull it out. Mm. Might as well preheat everything, get it started, get it ready to go. I do vape. It is a bad habit. Please don't start if you do, or if you don't, don't start because of me. Don't use me as a skate. Uh, don't recommend it. But it, it helps me, so I do. It hurts me, but it helps me. It's one of those you know, evil trade-offs. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna send this file over to the uh, K1 and doesn't hurt to have a backup in case you break something but we're gonna get that hmm. it's purple do I have any purple the hot end part is done in purple so I'm wondering hmm some recycled PTG in purple do I want to print a part in PETG it's PETG that prints at PLA temps, recycled by Greengate. Um, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's let's do it in some some Greengate. We'll do we'll do it in some purple. So we'll have a purple mount as well in PETG. We'll see how it does. It's not directly in contact with the hot end, so you know, should be okay. Let's grab this. Let's see, we should be hot enough now. We are okay. Let's go down and hit the unload. Let's find our unload filament macro in this big wall of macros. 
load material. Where's the unload material? Do I not have an unload material back row? I'm going to have to make one. Yeah, there's no unload, which is weird, but I can still do it from the screen, so not a big deal. Tap screen, click on here, go to extrude, retract, and retract. There we go. It's going to heat up a little bit. While it's doing that, I'm going to use my Murph Greengate Recycled Amethyst. It is amethyst. It was a Murph 2023 only color. Yes, I was at Murph. So if you were ever at Murph, you probably saw me. There's my face again. So if you're like, why do I know him, Murph? I'm going to Rocky Mountain this year, though. So I will be at Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest in the lovely Loveland, Colorado, because my good friend Justin, a.k.a. Breakor 3D, is one of the three founders of the Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Fest. And I missed the first year because financial issues. Surprise, right? People having financial problems? Never. But, yes. I'm biting the bullet, figuring it out, and we'll make it happen. We will be there this year, come hell or high water. I need to see if the side mount spool holder for this thing is an option for the K1, uh, since there is one for the Max. You know, I know the Max they have one. I know Chuck did a video on it. I got to look at that video. I haven't seen it yet. Let's see if I can get this to extrude now without having to go through the headache of popping the lever. Well, let's see here. I guess while I'm waiting for it to preheat, we'll just get in here and pop the lever anyway. And Okay. Should be good. Let's get this filament wrapped around the spool again since it did that stupid thing it does. Not a fan of the way the spool mount works. Yep, it left a pile, so we should be good. Yeah, we're good enough. Okay. Take that off of there. Pull that out of there. Let's clean this off. Gosh. Okay. Hit it with a little bit of the spritzy spritz. You hope high water doesn't reach this far or reach where Rocky Mountain is being held. That'd be a bad or that'd be bad news for the rest of us. Yes, it would. You are correct, sir. It's correct, sir. <laughs> okay. There's that. Okay. Now let's go back to home screen. There we go. Let's come up here. Go back into slicer. Boom. And send upload and print. There we go. All right. Scroll back up and let's watch as speedy prints. The one thing I don't like and I can't figure it out is why um, I have the camera. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't work with the mainsail. It'll work with fluid, but not with mainsail. I got to figure that out and make it work, you know? Would be nice. Twould, twould be nice to have it working. There. Done with those. Ooh, it's revving up. Let me put the lid back on. Not that it needs it, but... Ooh, crap. It just helps to keep it kind of quiet in there. I have to print some more caps, because... I'm missing one, and I think, I love my sons, but I think it's one of them, of course, you know, moving it around over the years. 
they've had it in their possession for a hot minute. Got to reprint this little bracket so I can tuck all this back here. Should just throw a zip tie on it. Let me find my zip ties. I got I got a couple more left, I think. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three. I have four zip ties. And it should be enough to semi tidy this up for a moment. Because again, we are waiting, and I don't want to necessarily put this one on yet. So what I'll do is I'll put them on, but I won't make them tight. So that I can always come back later and kind of cinch them down a little more. I am going to have to figure out why my park cooling fan doesn't want to work at the moment. There's that one. Snugged up, but not too tight. Oh! an extra one back here cool okay there's another one all right I have more zip ties, so it's not like putting these on now is going to be a problem later. Come on. There we go. And then this one can go right here for now. Actually, hold on. We'll go right here. Right through everything. Let me see something. Oh, I hate that. Wow. I might have to slide these zip ties back a little bit more. I'm noticing that these wires are not overly cooperative. There we go. Because then that can still get over here. Yeah, that'll be enough, I think. Let's see. Take it all the way up. There. Yep. Take this one down. Take this one down. There is plenty of extra wire now. Hey, look at that. I want to get some sleeve action going on here. I've got some more of this sleeve. I re-sleeve everything kind of together, you know. Droop. Oh, doing a drop, Da Vinci. Yeah, do the drops. They should work. If it doesn't work, uh, wait. Uh, that one, I don't think it does. Let's see. Oh, the drops may not be working. I'm noticing that I don't have all of the stuff showing up. Uh, let's see here. I go to main with dock. Let's go there. And oh crap! I changed some stuff, so it's not going to work. I will. I will work on drop for the next stream, guys. I will work on drop for the next stream. I don't have any drop. I don't have any drop subs anymore or uh, drop sponsors anymore. Got to talk to some people. Maybe we can at least get that part taken care of. You know, get a sponsor for the drop game. Let's see. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. We'll let it print in purple. And we'll have a black one that'll be here pretty quick. And then we'll also have purple to try out too. The black one is 87% uh, done. A little longer than an hour and a half by the time it's done. But that is okay. It'll be printed in some nice cement. Galaxy Black. I was hoping to be done by now so I could, you know, kind of go in and relax a little bit, but not so much the case. Uh, let me see something here. There. Yep. Yeah. I have a bunch of... Close that, close that, close that. My loving wife had called and then hung up. 
Do, 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 do. Check Facebook real quick. Go back here. Look here. All right. And go back here. Grab this one. Kick it up there. Oh my God. That K1 is just screaming over there now. Oh, here comes somebody again. Let's see. It says ETA is should be done in about 10 minutes is the ETA. Her daughter's back. They told you to ask me why my uh, I had Sharpie marker on my finger that you ran off. Why I have Sharpie marker on my finger. Oh, why do you have Sharpie marker on your finger? Because I was being a smart ass talking about how I have I was doing some stuff and hadn't gotten Sharpie on me because oh, I had a pretty good. Um, anyways, don't care. Um, so I took out the trash, did the dishes. Okay. Well, I loaded the dishwasher, cleaned the kitchen. Um, and I have a question for you. Uh, so tomorrow morning, can you since Kay's staying, can you like get her to Dale's? Oh, Taylor's spending the night. Yeah. Oh, she needs to be to Dale's at like 5.30 in the morning. Or 5 o'clock or whatever. So I'm supposed to get up early, get her up, and get her over there? You get up at 5.30 in the morning every other day. I, I get up earlier than 5.30. But I don't expect you to remember that. You think Dan's about to get banned? Let's see. Isn't it against the terms of service to choke a child on stream? <laughs> oh, Wolfman, you are, you are, by the way, Blasto, hi. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. That's early. Yeah, I, I, I love how my daughter sits right over my ear, wants me to do something for her, and then sits right in my ear and just makes noise and is annoying, like... That's going to make me want to help her anymore, you know? I don't care who you are. That's funny right there. <laughs> oh, I know. I, trust me, I know. Blasto says I'm a patient man. Are you wearing... Put that in your ear. I don't want to. No, put it in your ear. I don't want to. Put it in your ear and listen to it. I don't want to. No, put it. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong ear. Yeah, I noticed. Does it sound amazing? She's trying to tell me she wants new head bones. No, cause... these are tailors, but mine are broken too. Yeah. So, like, if I go like this. What does it sound like? Yeah, it sounds like total garbage. But yeah, she wants me to buy her another hundred and fifty dollar pair of, you know, headphones. Actually, no, I want the pros. So. So she wants like the two hundred and fifty dollar pair because she thinks that we have two hundred and fifty dollars. I also need a new phone. And she thinks we have a thousand dollars to buy her a new phone. It's but not yet. even thousand dollars. It's like a hundred. It's like thirty dollars a month. Yeah, do the math. Thirty dollars a month for two years. Take this. Okay, love you. Yes, I will obviously have to get Taylor there because ain't nobody else gonna do it. So. Yeah, thanks, bud. Very mm. appreciated. Mm. G. Hey, they let Chewy in, so now I'm gonna get a tag. Hey, it's cold. Please close the door. I'm printing stuff. You and your dad just got the 15 Pros, traded in your 13 Pros. Yeah, my daughter just wants a newer one because she had a, an 11 or a 12, and then she broke the screen, and now she's back to a 7, I think. I mean, she's back on an iPhone 7, and she doesn't like it. So, got $1,000. So, it was only 200 bucks. Nice, Blasto. That's awesome. 
Uh, well, it's been fun. It's been real, but it hasn't been real fun. I know. Babysitting the grandson, and he's up. All right, Da Vinci. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Steph. Thanks for hanging out, and come back often. I plan to stream at least once a week on the weekends for right now, but there may be like midweek streams. I usually post to X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, so feel free to come by and hang out. Uh, tonight, like I said, we we're just working on this. I got the wire redone on it. We're going to get it up and running. I'm going to get some, hopefully I'm going to get it up and running before I go in the house tonight so I can get some prints done off of it so I can post some stuff to, to X and let everybody see how it does i need to get some tpu so if anybody's feeling generous and wants to throw some down below there click the link throw some my way and then i can uh get some tpu if anybody wants to help me get to rocky mountain that number is a bit inflated i know but hotel is about a quarter of that for the hotel for the four days so that still needs to be food costs, everything else, plus I'm hoping to pick up a sponsor table if I can, so that's going to cut into this number as well. So, and again, like I said, any content I make where end credits will roll, anybody who throws money towards this here, your name will be listed in an end credit on the, on the, the content with a thank you in the, in the little doobly-doo down below over on the tubes of the U and probably going to put it up on Rumble and maybe Odyssey because keeping all of your eggs in one basket is a bit of a bad thing because we're finding that people are getting strong armed or short end of the stick or screwed over whatever works best for you. I am at 94% done on the bear. And I am 29, 31. Wow. It is 31% done. It says ETA on the K1 is going to be done by 2022 hours wise. So 822. So that's like 30 minutes from now. So not bad. So if all goes well, the K1 will be done in, you know, Slicer says 52 minutes. Estimated time says, I don't know, it keeps jumping around. But, yes. Ooh, Ooh a yawn. Man, I must be getting old and tired, huh? If anybody legitimately wants to sponsor my trip to Murph, please let me know. Or Murph, Rocky Mountain. If anybody wants to, like, legit sponsor my trip. Uh, I'm hoping to get some shirts made out soon. I will be more than happy to put Powered By, uh, you know, we'll do, like, a Rocky Mountain shirt. And I'll be wearing that and can put, you know sponsors and then on the back of the shirt i can put all the sponsors names logos whatever if anybody is interested in that let me know you can like legit sponsor the trip i i will totally take someone who's like here is x amount of dollars we want like we want to be a proud sponsor of getting you to rocky Mount. i uh you know it'll be fun you know, walk around with a bunch of company logos on me. <laughs> on my back, anyway. On the front, it would just be my logo. You know, I was hoping, I was hoping a couple companies would, you know, hop on board. One specifically, uh, I don't ever try to talk bad about people, companies. I, I love the. There was one company I was talking to. I love that company. I'm going to continue to love that company. I'm going to continue to promote that company along with the others 
and and I hope that everyone will, you know, just Switzerland it up, man. Just you know, everybody just come here to get along. We all excited. Ooh. Here we go. All right. We are at 97% done. The parts will be done here pretty quick. And then we can kind of swap out the stuff we need to swap out. We'll have to figure out why that part cooling fan quit working. I wonder if when I kind of squished everything together, if I improperly connected that. Uh, or if it just came unplugged. It could have very well come unplugged. 97% done on the bear. 44% done on the K1. Let's take a look at the K1 and the bear and see how they look. Uh, that is just finishing up the cylindrical part at the top. And this thing is screaming. Let's see. Get that big old clunky hot end out the way so I can see a little better. There we go. It's putting the top layer on. So, yeah. Just let it ride. Plug that in there. Or clip it on there. There we go. Blasto, you need tighter pants. I, I know, Blasto. These are, these are like when I was, uh, these are when I was a little chunkier. Look at that, Blasto. Losing weight. I'm, I'm 210. I've been floating around 210. I, I was down 205, and then I gained back 5, so I'm 210. It's where I've been sitting. I'm very happy with that. That is a, a weight that I will I will be good at. So, yeah, these are all my big guy pants, you know. Yep, Blasto. Yep, yep. Thank you, sir. I'm feeling good, and that's the important part. You started a 2,000 calorie, calorie Mediterranean diet. Down three pounds. It's likely water. It, it probably is, but you, you start losing some water, then you'll kind of plateau for a little bit, and then you'll start to you know keep going again. It's just sticking with it. People get so quickly discouraged when they try to lose weight, and they get to, uh, they see a quick loss of weight due to the uh, water being, you know, being kind of taken out of your system, and then you plateau forever, and everybody's like, oh, I plateaued, I haven't, nah, 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 nah. it's like, keep going, your body has to work through stuff, and it kind of happens in steps, people are just now, 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 we've gotten, with the introduction of the internet and things like that, people have gotten way too used to getting everything right away, they don't have patience, it's like patience everybody patience there we go all done Ta -da. Ooh, let go why is that weird why is that doing that that is so weird anyway let's make sure it stayed flat it did okay good that was weird it was uh, very well sticketed down three pounds let's make sure yep there we go that'll work all right let's get this uh bad boy mounted and get that bl touch on there so let's take this off to the side and let's flippy flop some camera action here. There we go. Let's turn this to the side. Let's shut this thing down real quick. And we'll unplug the pie real fast as well. There we go. Let's bring you guys up here. That is the part that we will be working on. Let's get the proper tools in place. We just need to take these off. 
So we'll take this, swing it down out of the way, so we don't have to fight everything. We'll put this back through and start this one back up. Wait a minute. Vishal, you said that this screw should work, but it doesn't appear to be long enough. Yeah, that doesn't appear to be long enough. Yeah, it's not even making it in. So we'll get some longer ones. Not a big deal. I have longer screws. Uh, let's see here. How long are those? A little bit, but not enough, I'm sure. Let's see. Let's just see if that's going to be. Oh, that one might. Oh, we got to switch our bit now. This might be a long enough screw. I had a couple sitting on the bench from parts I took apart earlier. Let's see if this one's long enough. No, not long enough. Okay, well, we gotta go longer. Not a big deal. I have many kits with many screws. Where is all my M3 screws? Let's see. I have many, many a screw, as it were. Let's see. Is that one plenty long enough? Feels like it. But I don't know. Let's flip our tip again. I have many a screw. Let's see. Yeah, that one's still not long enough. Peepers. Peepers, peepers. Where'd you get those peepers? That one's probably plenty long enough and then some. Oh, yeah. That one's going to be way too long. Don't need that one. We need shorter than this one. And it's the same size. All right, let's take a look at over here. I got some screws over here still, too. I got screw kits all over the place. Let's see. That one's a little bit shorter, but I think I need to go shorter yet. Yeah. Let's see. We'll attempt this one and see if it goes in all the way or not. Yeah, that one bottoms out before it gets to where it needs to be, so it's got to be shorter than this guy. That is a long way in. Jeepers. Dad gums. It's my... My favorite non-swear word. Dad gummit. Okay. Let's dig through. These got all messed up, so. I think that might be it. Let's try it. Okay. There we go. That one will work. Okay, let's take this one out now. All right. Swing that up into place. Let's see if for some reason one of them just happened to be accidentally shorter. No, nope. not accidentally shorter. It was legitimately shorter. I mean, it could very well have been an accident, but I don't think it was. That's okay. There we go. All right. There we are. Fan mount is on, and... It acts as end stop as well. And it puts the nozzle just off the bed when it hits, so that's a good sign, right? Now we need one more, kind of a tiny screw, because it just needs to go through and kind of grab for this guy. 
once we put the BL Touch on, you put this guy in. I should probably find a much smaller one because that's not going to. Let's see. Let's just see. We'll get some threads cut with it at least. There we go. Then that'll bite. And that'll keep it in place. But yeah, that thing don't need to be that long. Let's see if I can find a super stubby one. It's a super stubby. That's all I need. You just need enough to break the plane, right? There we go. That'll work. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's back that off. There we go. Take that out. Let's get the BL Touch mounted. So let's come back here. Get the BL Touch remounted. Let's get all this stuff put away. Guys, let me clean up after myself a little bit. That way I don't have such a mess out in front of me. Okay, all that, stay over there. This guy. There we go. So anyway, there is the new fan mount and BL Touch mount, all that good jazz. It's got the nice little Sliceworks logo on it. But now we need to go this way so we can mount the BL Touch. That is quite a long screw once you do that. It's very, very long. Let's see if I got some shorties that I could use instead now. Could put some spacers in there, but yeah, we'll just leave it. We'll put a, oh, my daughter again, and Tay. Yeah. I'm streaming, um, so when you come in, you're on stream. Uh, anyway, uh, she has to be at Dale's for 4 5. Okay, so I have to be up and ready by 4.30, by 4.45. Got it. Yeah. So I can drop her off and then go get Mama Fountain Pop and stuff, come home and twiddle my thumbs. Got it. Are you using my AirPods? I'm yeah, not. She broken. is. She gave me the one that sounds like it's underwater. Yeah, this was underwater. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! It's almost like I know what technology. I tried. They sound like, they look like cables. They're not. They're not your brothers? No, I have to get new Yeah. Or S cables. Oh. Doing whatever it takes. I'm not on the Oh, shit, I can't sing. No, don't sing while I'm on stream, please. I don't want to get in trouble and then get booted off. Thank you. Okay. Get these tightened down, finger tight for the moment, and then I'll get a a Phillips head. Oop, I bumped you. Sorry, guys. Okay. Grab a Phillips head bit. Let's see something here. That is that guy. Do, 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 do. I have a missing bit in my iFixit kit, and it irritates me. Tighten it down. Tighten it down. There we go. Some long ends. That's okay. Oh. Let's bring you guys back up into the mix. There we go. Okay. So, kick this around. Plug this guy back in here. Okay, see, wire plugged back in. Now we slip this back up into here. And since that's on now, let's plug everything back in so that we can deploy probe and do some probey stuff, right? Hey, look at that. It went clicky, 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 clicky. Isn't that awesome? It went clicky, 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 clicky. I need to keep this one, though, so I can get through here and tighten that once I have it set where I need it. So, put my Phillips head bit back. Grab my tools. Move all this stuff back out of the way. There we go. Oh, 
Uh oh. Added permission term upskirt. Oh, yeah. Zachmon, yes, Blasto is alive. I love the upskirt view. <laughs> Digital Dragon, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely up there. I wish I, I need better cameras. I'm not gonna lie. If anybody is rolling in mad cash or has some older cameras that they used for streams and they don't use anymore, hey, send it my way. Uh, like I said, I know that um, right here, this number is is a big number for a lot of people, and it's a big number for me too. But that number will guarantee, without a doubt. I am here. I am already uh, in for a quarter of this for the hotel room alone. So greatly appreciated if you can. If you can't, not a worry. I will probably end up having to sell my soul to the devil. Let's see. Can break flag in three. Can break flag in three. Wow, Speedy is talking about breaking flags. Oh, got a plug in the power back into this guy tech jeeper well Heidi ho neighbor how are you good to see you guys I uh, I got the uh, slice works direct drive the focus clone or focus esque uh, hot end installed I still have to do the slicer stuff just start only dance I know blasto uh, I still have to get the uh, filament runout sensor um, part into the firmware but that's that's something i'll do whenever this is running clipper uh so we've got it pretty much to the point now where i just got to set my bl touch height so i got to get that probe down and then i'll i'll be able to kind of see so let's do a let's see here uh there we go. Pin is down. Let's move this down. Don't do what I do. Don't be a damn. Ah, boom. Okay. Trying to get you guys down low enough so you guys can kind of see. I may. I, I pretty much just want to make sure that when the nozzle is on the bed. Or when the probe gets to the bed, it's before the nozzle hits. So I'm going to back that up just a little bit. And then now we're going to we're gonna grab something because it's a little bit of a tight, a little bit of a tight fit. So we're going to now let's see. Yeah, nozzle touches and it starts to flashy flashy. So we made it bad which is no big deal. Oh, you got a... BL Touch. Zach. BL Touch Debug... Uh, debug. What, what is it to reset the damn BL Touch? Is it BL Touch Debug Command Reset? Maybe? Let's see. Reset. Enter. Yes, it is reset. Say, I remember. Down. There we go. Okay. Now, we want to make sure the nozzle doesn't touch. So, we'll now... Uh, you know what? Let's live dangerously. I don't have it tightened down, but let's see if I'm good enough or close enough. I'm going to tighten that screw real quick while it's pulling everything back. Okay. Wow, that wasn't too far off. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Right there. And then we can pull these two wires back here. They're a little bit in front of the uh, fantabulous. But let's tighten that down. That works pretty good. Now let's pull all of this back real quick. Pull this back, this one back. And we'll tighten that a little bit more. And then we'll pull these. Not that much. 
There we go. There. There. And there. Okay. Grab the old snippy snips. If I can figure out where the hell I put them. There they are. Grab my snippy snips. Get rid of these little tags that are sticking out, or tabs that are sticking off here. Okay. There. Get all those out of there. I know I have some more zip ties floating around in all this stuff. There's some quite a bit larger ones, though. But that's fine. I'm going to use a couple of these really big ones just to kind of help keep all this together over here. Hey, guess what? The, uh, the K1 just finished the print. <laughs> I just got this one put together, and the K1 just finished. So, yeah, uh, K1 was definitely quite a bit faster, uh, considering this just finished a few minutes ago, and we got it all put together. One just finished, and we started the K1 quite a bit later. Probably going to throw another one or two on here. But for right now, this is enough to keep it at least somewhat together. Like I said, I've got some sleeving. I'll probably just pull over the top of it all the way up, and that way I don't have to undo what's already been done, you know? But there. There we go. All right. Filaments in, BL touches on it. Let's uh, let's do a probe. Let's do a probe uh, calibrate. Scroll down. Did I set a probe calibrate macro? No, I did not. It's dadgummit. That's all right. We can just run it. Oh, we already homed everything, so now we should be able to probe underscore calibrate. There we go. Oh, let's get everything preheated, too, while we're at it, right? Oh, that's all right. We'll just, we'll just run it. I'll, re, I'll recalibrate in a minute. Actually, yeah, let's just stop the probe, calibrate. Let's preheat. There we go. Get the bed up to 60, the nozzle up to 170. If the nozzles touch, then it's gay. I, I, you know, Blasto, you are probably the person to tell me that. And, and I, I think you would be the most accurate individual to tell me that. That's why I love you, because you, you are not afraid to tell me the things that I should know. So, thank you, Blasto. If anybody thinks I'm being mean to Blasto, you better know Blasto, because Blasto is a beautiful human being, and we all love Blasto. And if you don't love Blasto, what the hell's wrong with you? Um. Hmm. I now kind of want to switch to these purple parts, but I just put it together. So let's see how well they turned out anyway. There we go. <laughs> the purple amethyst. The purple amethyst from uh, Murph from Greengate. It's got a little bit of wispiness going on. Filament's probably a little damp from being open air. Gate enters through the feet. <laughs> oh, it did! It did! It did print kind of ugly uh, under here. Let me see if I can. So that part, a little better cooling. It's definitely needs a little better cooling, but let's see if we can fit it together. Start at the top and push down. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
Now that filament definitely needed a bath. It uh, adhesion is uh, leaving a little bit to be desired at the moment. So there we go. Force it through. There we go. Now there it is. Okay. Yeah, I could totally use this though. Oh wait, PTG. Oh, it broke. I didn't have enough. Ah. Uh, guess I can't use it. I mean, I can still use potentially part of it and then use the black arm, but rainbow toe socks to protect you from it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the rainbow toe socks are the way to go. All right. Let's rehome everything. Let me switch back here, guys. There we go. We are going to give her some hell here in a minute and see how well this does. We're going to just throw something at it. Okay, there's that. Now let's go ahead and rerun the probe calibrate. They'll come down and touch again. Touch tips. There we go. There we go. Now let's see how much we need to uh, bring it down. The Ender 3 Pro, if you guys were watching that stream, the Ender 3 Pro, I eyeballed the bed level on that, just a manual eyeball level, and it was crazy how accurate it was. Like, I haven't touched the bed springs, and it's been printing great, and I just eyeballed it and said, this looks good. All right, let's drop one, two, three, four, five. That's down five. Let's go down six. Ooh, look at that. Just barely scraping. So let's go down. Uh, that's a little too snug. Let's go back up about half that distance. Wait a minute. Yeah. Still a little snug. Let's go up one, two. There we go. There we go. That's the snugness I like. Accept it. Bam! All right, what do I have on this thing? I have uh, some speaker parts that I wanted to print for the Polymate 3D. Speaking of, I printed a bunch of parts on the Ender 3D2 in blue. And if any of you would also like to support Paul in his 3D printed speakers, which are pretty awesome, uh, let me let me let me send you guys to Paul's uh, printable site. Copy. Bam! Polymate 3D. Through. 3D printed speakers. Bam! There you go. You guys have not already seen these. Check these out. These are legitimately 3D printed speakers, as in. Here is a cone and cap printed in vase mode. Here is uh, here's your top ring that your uh, spider and um, the the I forget what it's called now, uh, but here's your cage. You pop these two pieces together, slap a little glue in there, print some parts in TPU that the ring and the spider. And then your cone drops down in here. You put a couple magnets in there. You wrap the base of your cone here with some copper wire in that little uh, dimple down there. You wrap it, and then you pull your two wires through those two holes there. Uh, pull them out, and then there's a cabinet that you can download and print to then put, you know, basically a fully 3D printed with the exception of the magnets the wiring, and then whatever driver board you use to, to drive them. But then they're 3D printed, and if you check his YouTube, his X, or Twitter, you'll see that they actually sound really good for 3D printed parts. So, and he's been working on this since 2018, I believe. He's got like five years of R&D into this. So, and he's been doing it based on his love for it, and... Um, 
some like Patreon donations, things like that. So if you want to support him, go support him. He's an awesome dude. Uh, for several months, I, I supported him, but then my financials said, eat a bag, and I quit. I just scared the cat when I oh when I yelled bam I scared the cat <laughs> I hate spoof man <laughs> I know it's it's loud it's clipping but everybody was telling me that they couldn't hear me that I was very quiet so then I I cranked it up and now everybody's like you're too loud you're too loud um let's see here let's go back in let's look at OG Ender three. Let's go ahead and discard everything. Let's find a new file to print. Let's see here. Go here. Let's delete that. Let's go into add an object. Let's go find something kind of quick. Uh, 3D printing, 3D printed files. Scroll down. Let's see. What do you guys think? Boron cube? Let's just do a boron cube. There we go. Okay, boron cube. Uh, let's change a bunch of settings real quick. Let's just go with. It's actually Prusament. No, nope, it's Creality. That's right, it's Creality. So, Creality PLA. Um, And then change this to 0.2. Uh, just go 15% infill. Let's make sure that filament is 205. Oh, I, I forgot to check the fan. Yeah, we'll let it ride. We'll see what it does. All right, slice it. There we go. One hour, 34 minutes. Send it. Upload and print. Here we go. Oh, you know, I didn't set the uh, offset for the probe. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Forgot to change the probe offset, I think. It looked like it was pretty close. Let me see. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty close to where the other probe mount was. So maybe it's a little bit farther forward. We may end up with a bit of an error here. That's okay. We'll We'll fix it. We, we will, we will rock you. Yeah, actually, I hope I didn't literally scare the shit out of the cat, because that would be a bit of a mess for you, sir. Okay. So, the little fan shroud mount that they have seems pretty nice. It's a bit of a thicky boy, so I did have to replace these screws. I did have to use different belt. Those are two things I did have to change, so it's, I'm thankful I had those. So for anybody who gets this, I hope that uh, it, it may be different. Bear in mind, this was one of the first kits like a year ago, over a year ago when they did this. So bear in mind, it's an older kit that I had for quite a while, and I dropped the ball. So I'm doing this now because I got the Ender 3 Pro sitting here. It is, uh, uh-oh. Huh. Well, it didn't bother to probe. I guess I forgot to put probing in there. Oh, there it goes. Now it's squirting out filament. Hmm. It is right now. Let's see here. Let's uh, baby step that bad boy down. You gotta baby step it way down. I don't know why. Let's see. I'm just trying to make sure I get it close enough and then I'll call it good. So let's go ahead and leave it there. Let's hit save. Click OK. And then let's cancel this print and we'll restart it, guys. Stop. Cancel. Let's see. Yeah, that was looking good. Okay. 
We saved it. Let's give it a save and restart, and then we'll resend it. We got a squirter. Yes, it was squirting filament. You are correct. Save config. Oh, that's right. BL touch and Z offset conflict. That's right, because I did some crazy stuff and I forgot to change that. So, my Z offset. Let's grab that real quick. Copy. Let's go into my thing here. Go into my pro. And then let's find our Z offset. Paste in the new number. There we go. Let's see, we start. There we go. What's going on? My phone's blowing up. There we go. I can fix the problem by putting my CZ offset section back in the right place and take it out of the probe file because that's where I put it, like a ding dong. Mm. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, I gotta pull some crap out of there, but that's okay. My Pi is under voltage. However, I do have a small little 5 volt power supply sitting over there, a little mean well 5 volt that came out of my boron. Or I could just get a buck converter and then mount a buck converter. Where are you going? Why are you going way up there? Oh, I gotta get one of the. I gotta get one of my little cabley, my little cabley dangly like cheapo like badge things. Let me see if I've got one. Just to keep that wire from falling onto the print. Where would I have put those if I was stuff that Dan had and he wanted? Where would I be? <coughs> oh. That's right, the last place he would look. Let's look in this cabinet. Hmm. Because I know I had them out the other day. Speaking of, I found them. The dollar store. They sell these these little like badge things at the dollar store. It's like dollar and a quarter store now. But they're three packs for a buck and a quarter. They work good couple of zippy zips. Let's make sure that's looking good. That is looking much better. However, I do have to fix my offset because, you know. Let's see. Let me put you guys in there. Let's get you guys up in there. Get you guys all up in the business. Pick you up. Move you. Close as I can get you. There you go. I got a booger floating, but I can't help it right now. It's just doing its thing. Wow, is that extruding quite well compared to what it was earlier. So we may have to throw some speaker parts at this and print some PLA speaker parts in white. Because why not, right? Why not? Let's get two more of these zip ties. Blasto, don't look at the screen. I caught you. Caught you. Okay, so... A zip tie here and a zip tie there. Here a zip, there a zip, everywhere a zip, zip. Oh, I got a zip tie, like, getting involved in my print. Okay, that goes there. This goes here. It actually is pretty, pretty good. I don't really think I need to do this, but I'm going to. We're going to go up around that handle. Maybe that will help keep that handle in place. Because normally I just zip tie it to where the filament holder is. But I'm looking for something to keep the handle in place. There we go. There we go. Snippy, snippy. 
There's that. There we go. There. Uh-oh. Here comes a kid again. At least I think. Could be wrong. Sounded like it. There we go, guys. We got prints in action. And it's not looking bad. I didn't I didn't like super tune anything yet. But I will. And plus, it doesn't help that I don't have cooling going right now, since I kind of forgot to check that cooling fan situation. i got to make sure that it's proper. It's going to be a really goopy one. But I'm just too stinking curious, you know? I just, I want it to go. So, yeah, for whatever reason, my 40, 40, 40 ton, my 40 ton blower fan there ain't going. Oh no, under voltage. Oh no, my pie is under voltage again. Should we get silly and start bumping up the speed? You know, should we, should we go crazy? Let's see here. What are we currently? Speed factor, 100%? Uh, let's go up to 120%. Because, I mean, it's all stock ender that's, you know, except for the hot end and extruder now. Oh, you know what? I know what part of my problem is. I'm kind of a ding dong, guys. I forgot to change my uh, retraction. See how dumb I am. So my my retraction setting is way off. It's retracting way too far. We should probably fix that, huh? We should probably go in the slicer and fix the retraction. Let me see what the old retraction settings are. I don't remember where my Prusa profile went. Or Prusa slicer profile went. So, yeah, between the fact that the fan needs to be fixed and uh, retraction is way the hell off. Because it's currently doing retraction on a Bowden setup. And I didn't fix that. Hmm. Guess I should probably stop that print before I do more damage. Plus, we can see about the fan. Might as well, right? Ad break is over. Let's go. Um, let me go to my GitHub and see if I still have it up there. Don't remember. Gotta log into GitHub. Let's go back to my GitHub. Okay. My repo. 
repositories. Hey, focus files. There we go. Push slicer config. Let's find retraction in this bad way. Okay. Um, retraction length point eight. Retraction length tool head ten. Viking. What's up, brother? Retraction speed fifty. So I did a point eight at fifty. All right. So I need to do retraction speed set to fifty and retraction length point eight more or less just got home nice well i am putting the sliceworks direct drive kit on this ender 3 pro this is my og original ender 3 pro man the one i gave to my sons it's back in my house whoa they're staring at my ceiling but anyway it is back with me it is mine again because my sons have decided they don't want it so i got that installed we got the uh New fan shroud with the end stop block and the uh, probe, uh, the EL Touch probe. So, you sold your Ender 3 a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> nice. Well, there's an Ender 3 V2 right here behind me. You can see it right there. Ender 3 V2 that I just picked up from Micro Center for 100 bucks. because why not? Actually, my buddy, uh, my buddy Chris hooked me up with that. It was one of the $100 ones. Let's go into my... Uh, filament, printer, extruder, scroll down here to length, set that to 0.8, and then retraction speed, set to 50, detract speed, we really don't need a 40 detract speed, because I don't think I had detraction set. Uh... Yeah, D-Track C speed is set to zero. Okay. Minimum travel. Do, 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 do. All right. Z-Lift. I am going to turn on Z-Lift. Point two. Because I just, for some reason... Now, you know what? No. If I have Z -li or Lift Z turned on here, let me take a look. Sorry, brother. I can't see the screen at the moment. I'm checking some code and stuff. Uh, lift Z... After retraction, lift is zero, zero. Yeah, it was set to zero, so there was none. Okay, so there's no lift. Okay, so there we go. Set that, save that. OG 3DP. There we go. Sorry, brother. Let me move this. Yeah. Um, all right. There's that. Slice this bad boy again. That way we got that. Now we have it sliced. Oh, spaghetti balls. Hold on. Just realized. Click here. Um, I was being stupid. So there's that. OG 3DP. Not exactly sure why it does that, but OG 3DP. Yes, replace it. There we go. Back to the platter. OG, ED. 
and slice it again. And for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and upload it. There we go. Close that. Discard. Close that. Close that. Close that. And we can close that one and that one and click here and pull this off real quick. First layer wasn't looking terrible. It was not at all. But I do need to fix a couple things. I need to get my slicer setting, or uh, my slicer now. Um, we need to double check the offset um, X and Y for the probe. And then once we double check that, where's my metal ruler? There we go. All right. You're there. It looks like is seven so that's about right and then thirty thirty four it's thirty four okay let's go in machine probe go machine probe and let's check our x offset is negative 34 it's still 7 z offset that's all fine all right same so restart Which one's this one? Just me. Wow. Okay. Anyway, there's that. Let's go back here. Let's pull them all real quick and let's see. We'll have to fix that. Yes, we will. Blast toe. Let's uh, see here. Mm -hmm. Like that. Just hold. So, let it preheat, and then I'm going to tell it to do a calibrate. And we'll see how far off my probe points are, because it definitely looks like I need to change something. For some reason, it looks not right I'm trying to remember because the BL touch was mounted on this side from the nozzle so it's everything should be the same negative negative but calibrate default let it go and we'll see how it does oh yeah see it's definitely off So yeah, it is definitely off. So we got to move that back. Reboot. Power cycle printer. Power on printer. Plug that back in. Move that up just a scouch. 
I'll see here. How far off is that from where it should be? Five. Five from the edge. We want to come in about another five at least. So we're going to move that in about ten more. Not a problem. Boom. Probe. Hammer Y offset. Set to seven. And then bed mash starts at five five and it's off five. Mash max. You see homing position. Mm, somewhere simply wrong the number. I think the most owned printer is an under three. Probably Creality saturated the hell out of the market. And now with all the different variants of the under three. Yeah. But I've owned four under threes, uh, under three pros, one under three V2. Never owned an original under three though. The, the single 20, what was it? The 2040 extrusion or 2020 extrusion for the, uh, uh, 20, 2040 for the, uh, Y. I never had one of those, the 2020, at least it was a 2020 or 2040 extrusion for the Y. I don't, I've never owned one of those. Um, I think anybody remember when figuring your x and y position in clipper is it supposed to be if the probe is in front of the nozzle uh is it a negative number because my probe is in front of the nozzle by like seven that's why i have the negative seven because i thought it was a negative and then the probe is also to the right or to the left of the nozzle by 34. I'm trying to remember now if the negatives are right, and if they are, then my problem is here in this map. Because realistically, that number should be down. So at 155, it should be one. Because uh, uh, again, um, Yeah, let's let's take off. Let's 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 kind of mm. give me a second here. Oh, eBay, my eyeballs are just not happy. Let's let's just let's just see here. Uh, 235 divided by 2 is 117.5. So, 117.5, which would mean that this should technically be 117.5 as well. So, let's just save and restart at 117.5 for both and see if that's what it should be when I do my homing. Let's just see. Let's see if it goes more middle now. Nope. That is way off there. And way, way off there, because that's only homing at 100 millimeters from the front. And... Uh, 80 ish millimeters from the side. So, that ain't right. Let's go back to the probe. Uh, let me see here. Let me do something real quick.
Okay, so when the nozzle is N and the probe is P, so let's see here, magnification, BLT, place a nozzle. So let's say, yeah, these are both showing the nozzle and the probe. Ta-da. So let me just, okay, so like in my case, my nozzle, or my probe is in front of my nozzle. So yeah, it should be a negative. And then, yeah, my, so they both should be negatives, and I have them both set to negatives. Negative 34, negative 7. My x is negative 34, and it's 7 forward. So, that's that. Uh, as you say, homing would mean that 117 is my halfway point. So, let's bring up my calculator. So, let's clear this and go 117.5, and then my offset's 34, so we don't want to add 34. Do we want to add 34? Because that's my offset. Would make it 151.5, so that would be 151.5. And then figure, or no, yeah. Sorry, my X is one, one, five. And then my Y is only seven, so if I add that in. That'd be my y would be 7 plus or uh, 17 plus 7 is 4. So 124.5. Save and restart. Let's see if that fixes my issue. Because I'm being dumb and I'm having a brain fart. And it's always fun for you guys to watch me struggle. Okay, let's see if it gets closer to center now. Hey, much closer to center there, but let's see. Probe is touching down at one. One oh five there. Oof. One twenty five. So yeah, something definitely still isn't right this away. So it's one twenty five to the back, it's one oh five to the front. Good route. Okay, well, let's hold X. Now let's hold Y. How far over does that thing hang? That is another thing we need to take into consideration is the fact that the nozzle is uh, also about five millimeters farther forward, so add another five millimeters in. Because the nozzle is off, so let's go back here. There. Let's just do that real quick. And go back here and 
home again. I can't believe people are still watching me. Thanks, guys. To the couple of you here, see the fly? See that, see that annoying little fly? Okay. Yeah, that got better. Okay. Well. <laughs> well, Wolfman, I'm glad that my my misery in converting this thing is helping you uh, get your CR-10S up and ready for one last Ah, you don't want to yell too loud and scare any cats again. But there's that. Let's go to the machine and let's go to the printer config real quick. You see something? Yeah. Going to print a giant crab. Nice. Uh, Digital Dragon, I'm not sure that video is still there, but if you go to YouTube and look up um, Maker My Madness, or Maker My Nexus, I don't know if I said madness, sorry man, Maker My Nexus, um, the La Potato video should be on there, so give, give them a look. I'm going to be making a, a new video for the La Potato on how to get the OS flash to the EMMC. Do you have an EMMC on it? Because if you do, I can tell you an easy way right now. Because I'm going to be making a video about this and putting it out there, the easier way to get the OS flash to the EMMC. So if you're just doing an SD card, it's just go to Libre's website, downloads, make sure you pull the potato um, image for whatever OS. I ran Ras Raspbian just because... Raspberry Pi OS, Raspbian, it'll be okay. Um, but uh, there's an easier way, and I'm going to put out the video. It's it's a little bit more waiting because you have to basically get your OS image installed on the SD card. I use Raspbian because Raspbian has Raspberry Pi Imager built in. So I install Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi image. No EMMC yet? Okay. Um, then, yeah, I would just just use Raspberry Pi Imager. Uh, find whatever ISO you want in the downloads. I, like I said, I just, I'm comfortable with Raspberry Pi or with Raspberry OS. Raspbian, Raspberry OS, whatever it is, whatever they're calling it these days. I'm just comfortable with that. So that's what I downloaded and burned using the Raspberry Pi imager. Uh, you boot it up and you're good to go. Um, if you get an EMMC, you just snap the EMMC onto it, uh, power it back up, make sure you have the ISO file that you want to run saved to the SD card, uh, and then you go in and your uh, your Pi will see the EMMC storage. You just tell it to use that, write the file to it, Pop your SD card out, and boom, you're done. It does run way better, right? Way faster, way snappier. It's not like this huge thing, but it does run faster. It is snappier, and uh, it seems like they perform a lot better with the uh, EMMCs. So I every every time I, I play around with them now, I'm glad I have like. Like this Pi here has a EMMC on it. This one's a 32 gig. This has a 32 gig EMMC on it. Um, I've got the Fry, the La Frite. That's running a 16 gig. I've got a Renegade that has a 16 gig on it. The only one that that method doesn't work on 
is the Ferit, and that's because it doesn't have a SD card slot, so you have to use a, another device to flash to the EMMC, unless you have an EMMC, like you have a, a, a USB flasher where you can snap it on as a USB flash, put it in and write to it, then un, you know snap it off, plug it into the port and go. There, Those things do exist. I just don't have one, so that's why I used a Raspberry Pi for it. Uh, realistically, in the future, you can get away with using a Pi to do it, but I find that it, a pie, a potato, sorry. Uh, I find that the potato um, is pretty good. I want to get a sweet potato. I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm hoping I have a sweet potato on its way. If not, I will be buying a sweet potato, which is the upgraded version of this. And then they also have the cottonwood, which is currently just a dev board. They've got some pre-production runs that they've got out there. They're 100 bucks for the board. Uh, it's a huge step forward. It's um, specs-wise, I want to say as fast or faster than the Pi Five, and it's a hundred bucks. Uh, it is a dev board. I, I haven't gotten one of those or a pre-production. Sorry, not a dev board. I guess we're saying dev board. It's a pre-production board. I have not gotten my hands on one, but I want to, and then I want to get my hands on a Pi Five so that I can do some side by sides just to see. You know, positives, negatives, pros and cons. Um, I have a Big Tree tech board I got to get sent out. Or I got a couple Big Tree tech boards I got to get sent out. Money is an issue. But I got some boards I got to get sent out. Uh, Shane's one of the guys on the list. Let me hold this below the camera. But Shane, you have one right here with a, uh, an address on it. A Aaron and Tripods Garage are all on the list of people I got to send stuff out to, and so is Stone Monkey. The Stoned Monkey needs to get his as well. Um, I'm gonna take this off and run a po uh, potato on, maybe even like this guy. Actually, I've got another one that's in a case, but it doesn't have uh, EMMC on it, so I'm gonna order some extra EMMCs. I like I like the idea of having the EMMC and not being reliant on the SD card storage because we all know how sometimes unreliable SD storage can be. Um, I'm going to do another no-no, guys. Don't do what I do. Remember, I am not always a advocate for the most safe of things to do. So don't ever do what I do, especially like right now where I'm going to take the take this thing and open it up while it's live but that's because i want to be able to test and see what the heck is going on here with this park cooling fan i think that would be because i've had it sitting for so long that something may have happened to the park cooling fan but i also think maybe i just don't have it plugged in right or <laughs> dare i say it maybe i just don't have the right pin for it and maybe i wasn't using the right the right setup before so don't always do what i do or actually don't ever do what i do I shouldn't say don't ever do what I do, but if it looks sketchy, don't do it. Like this, this could be sketchy, so don't do this. This could be a guaranteed brick your stuff. So don't do it. Don't do what I'm doing. Unplug your unit, power your unit off. Do not play with your unit while it's live. There. That one off of there. Let the bundle of garbage fly at me as it may. There we go. Now let's see here. Let's see, this one is marked again, that is F1. F1 was the part.
dying. Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. No, the uh, no wonder nobody was saying anything. I I was talking to myself. <laughs> All right. Well, here I was talking to myself. I'm taking full responsibility for the fact that I just traced the voltage all the way up to the solder points on the back of that fan and the points on the back of that fan uh, have voltage to them but the fan and it is enough voltage it's supposed to be a 24 volt fan and it's getting over 24 volts at the fan not much but it's getting over 24 volts at the fan so it should be fine so that being said I'm gonna throw some plastic at it with no cooling and cross my fingers, I don't have a completely ugly looking print tomorrow when I come back out here. But I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to talk to some people, but I'm taking the blame because this poor hot end's been in my has been in my possession for quite some time, and I didn't use it. I didn't do anything with it, and now I feel as though I'm probably the reason why it's broken. So I'm not expecting any kind of replacement. Not expecting any kind of not replacement. Let's just put it this way. I figure I'll probably end up having to figure out something. But while I'm at it, let's get this bad boy put back on now. And we'll put the cover back on. We'll see what happens. And yeah, let's get this lifted back up again. Again, don't do what I do. Don't get inside your printer with it on always turn off the power unplug your printer it's always safer that way okay so having those two that way is good but bad so let's go this way that goes there these go down here and then this big old cluster of wire along with this. Let's see. Move all that all the way up. Let's take a look at some stuff here. Okay. All the way up. Okay, well, that can go there, that can go there, that can go there, that's all that. Tuck that in. Oh no, we want this to be able to come out further. There we go. However, I am now going to do something so that I can guarantee. Ta da! Yes, I cut that end off. Never be inside a printer while plugged in unless you know what not to touch. Or you just don't do it. <laughs> I'm just going to continue to stick to my don't do it, even though I'm doing it. Don't do what I do, because I don't always make the best of choices. So don't always be a damn. Ow. Stupid flying insect. You flew by me. I did not like it. Just because. Because, 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 because. Because of the wonderful thing. Don't do what Dan does, because Dan's not a smart man. Danimal the Granimal. What is that? Let's go flathead. Let's go this way. And let's see. That would be ground and power. So...
Yes, put ferals on everything. Feral all the things. There we go. Okay. I'm wondering if that fan is doing what it's doing. Because it's over tightened to the frame because it looks like it's dragging a little hey yeah, sometimes you just need a little percussive persuasion right Says the guy who fiddles with PC open and plug in and sometimes powered on to the uh, Yeah, wolf caller. I am a very, very, just call you wolf. Okay. My, my stream is dipping. What the hell? Come back, stream. Quit dipping. My internet should not be mad at me. Anyway, wolf. Wolfie. Dr. Wolfenstein. So, my guy, Wolf. I, uh... I'm an IT guy. I, I, I work IT, so there are certain things that I do that I know I should not do, but for the sake of getting it done quicker. Uh, my usual nickname uh, is Waffle. All right, Waffle. Waffle Copter? Raffle? Are you a Raffle Copter? There we go. Now we got the fan going.
Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, the the both units are our batteries are dying. So I think it's it's probably a omen or a sign that we need to just put this thing. You know, get this thing printing a sloppy, sloppy print because we're not going to have park cooling since, for whatever reason, I traced the, uh, I took my voltmeter, or my multimeter, and I traced all the way up to the actual fan. Like, I stuck it on where the fan, the solder pads are on the back of the fan, and I have over 24 volts all, all the way up and through. So... I'm I'm going to have to uh we'll probably replace a fan. I'm gonna try plugging another one into it, just not tonight, since the audio is kind of not happy with me. Yeah. So Let's see here. That one looks okay now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so since I'm constantly losing it, you need to head to her head a deep side. Yeah. It's that, that time of the night. I mean, it's 9.30. I have work in the morning. i got to be up before 4.30 because I have to get a kid up so that I can get her to the house that she's got to be at so she can baby or get the kids that she watches in the morning up moving and get them ready for school while... Uh, dad is off at work so all that being said probably should wrap this up but i want to at least start the print through so let's throw a let's restart a boron cube at it so let's go back up here click on boron cube and click print oh no wolf thank you thank you waffle 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 wolfer waffle waffler there we go. Let's get this bed wiped off real quick. TH3D Easy Flex Bed. If anybody is wondering, you get TH3D.com. I don't have a discount code. I don't have a referral code. So if you order one, just tell TH3D Tim that you bought it because of Dan. Make your mind Nexus DB3D. Dan, whatever. So, got a minute and a half ad break. So we'll give it a minute and a half for it to do its ad break, and you guys come back for those of you who are not uh, subbed to the channel. Uh, Ender 3v2. Man, that's a long break. But Ender 3v2 is going to get the Ender 3 Pro upgrade here at the metal so we'll put the metal extruder on there for anybody who can hear me at the moment that guy it's gonna be green on a blue printer but you know whatever this is one of two now because i have one from the ender 5 that i did when i did the direct drive upgrade on that and then there should be uh, a couple of bits and pieces floating around here for the one that I just took off the center. So, yeah. Off to bed, come back and harass me another day. Wolf, feel free, Waffle. You come, you come harass as you need to. Uh, just remember, the only thing I ask is keep it cool. Don't uh, don't come at people that don't know you. Uh, let's Switzerland it up here. Just have a good time. Relax. Learn together. Learn from my mistakes. Laugh at my mistakes. Whatever. You know, whatever. Just let's, let's just have a good time. Let's not be rude. Let's not be mean. And I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you were. I'm just saying that's just kind of the rules. You know, keep it cool. Be cool. Everybody's happy. And I am going to make sure this first layer goes down, and then I will be going down. So, on that note, thanks for coming and hanging out. 
should we try to find somebody to raid? Is there somebody to raid? Anybody on who thinks we can raid somebody for those who are not ready to retire for the evening? Let's go to Twitch and see who's on. Oh, zombie's on. Should we go see zombie. Should we go see zombie? When, when did zombie start? Zombie's got like 50 people watching him right now. KB3D Chris has 15 people watching him. Who do you think is more deserving? Peepers? What? Peepers. What's Peeper looking at? Oh, damn. Ow. I wonder what Peepers is working on. Let's see what Peepers is working on. Mm. Peepers is working on some custom leather. Who else is on? Uh, let's see here. Well, let's see what KB or KB3D Chris is working on. Ooh, what is this? This looks like a something. What's Zombie doing? Zombie's got 50 people watching him right now. Uh, looks like Zombie is. Every custom 3D printer help. Let's see. Maker and use reaction under three. Okay, so he is just chatting, chatting about stuff and news. And Chris is. Uh, I'm going to turn up the volume a little so you can see what Chris is doing. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm in here. I'm expecting... Let's go to KB. Oh, it's the laser pecker. He's working on a... He's playing with a laser pecker. Well, let's go check that out. I'm, I'm going to be in there for a few minutes while this, this print is going down. I'm going to give it a couple layers. Um, so, yeah. I'll be over in chat over there. Let's get the raid started. Uh, only thing I ask is for those who are here, please come along for the raid. Give a few, a uh, few minutes. You know, give them like three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, whatever. And uh, um, check them out if you're new. If you like what you see, give them a follow. If you don't, just do a old raid and run. Hey, thanks. Have a great night. Da da da, and off you go. Uh, otherwise, to the few of you that are here, thank you for sticking around so long. Thank you for watching this train wreck of a stream. Thankfully, we got everything up and going with the exception of the park cooling fan. We will have to figure out what is going on with that. But hopefully now with the retraction set properly. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm reprinting the same file. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to re-slice that file. I'm going to resend it to it. And uh, yeah, actually, is that the, the new one? I think I may have uploaded that one. Oh, let me see something. Anyway, guys, stay out of trouble, stay out of jail. Happy 3D printing, all that fun stuff. Talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.